You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Borth. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. And from our studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, Mr. David Williams. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Friday, 5th day of July 2013. Let's take a quick look at the numbers. The Dow is up 83 points. The S&P is up 10. Comp is up 22. Gold down $37.60. Crude is up a buck 61. Happy 5th of July. I didn't get a chance to personally wish you a happy 4th of July on the 4th of July. So allow me to now, after the fact, say... Happy Fourth of July. Hope you had a great time. Hope you were able to spend some quality time with your family. Maybe did a little barbecue. Maybe you went out and watched the fireworks. Maybe you did all of the above. Or maybe you just enjoyed having a day off. However it played out for you, I'm glad you're here with us today. If you're here for the very first time, welcome. Glad to have you. Uh, maybe you were a part of our two-day open house and so this is the first time you've actually made it into the live radio program. Again, welcome. I hope you'll join us each and every day. We've been at this for eight years, 12 noon to 2 p.m. Eastern. Now, that's the regular radio show. Most days, there's something called the after show, and that thing can run an hour. So stick around. If you have any questions, be sure and type them into the chat box because we do want you to participate participate in the discussion. Now, if you don't see any charts and you don't see a chat box, go to the home page at CFRN.net. On the right-hand side of the page, click that great big microphone. That will take you to a page, follow the instructions, you'll be registered, and every day for the rest of the month, you'll be able to see the charts and participate in the discussion. Now, the chart in front of me right now is the S&P 500 E-mini futures. It is the hourly chart. We'll get to that in just a moment. We're going to start out with our good word for the day. It comes from Romans 14.10, and it has to do with, friends, 
love one another. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Romans 14, 10 through 12. Now in the 1700s, although they had very different opinions on a main issue of theology, two key spiritual leaders of the day in Great Britain's evangelical churches, uh, one George Whitfield and one John Wesley, they still, even though they disagreed on some major theological points, they still had great respect for each other. John Wesley was the founder of the Methodist Church. George Whitfield was the Billy Graham of the day, an incredible evangelist and preacher. George Whitfield and John Wesley did not see eye to eye on the theology of grace. George Whitfield was a staunch Calvinist in his theology, strong on the sovereignty of God. Wesley was a staunch Armenian, strong on the free will of man to decide whether or not to receive the love of God and salvation through Christ. There began to be some division within the evangelicals of Great Britain. Knowing what these two spiritual giants believed, people began to fall into two camps. One day, John Wesley was asked, Will you see George Whitfield in heaven? Wesley immediately replied, No. And then, after a long pause, he added, Whitfield will be at a level so close to God that people like me will not be able to even get close to him. Now, if ever there's a way to diffuse a theological division in the body of Christ, that's the spirit with which to do it. What an example for us today. We may have a thousand reasons for why we think certain people don't deserve our love. But the fact is, Jesus said, Dear friends, love one another. And that's whether you agree with them or not. And that's our good word for the day. We'll now turn to the chart, the S&P 500 E-mini Futures. Hourly chart going back to last Sunday night on the Globex Open. We issued a tweet that said to consider being long above 1604. Price made a hasty advance to 1609. At 1609, we sent out a tweet that said, consider covering here, taking profits. Price came back to 1604. We pointed out on the page, and let me just show you the page I'm referring to. That would be this page. Price appears to be on its way back down to test the important area at 1604. You know our thoughts on this. You can use your slingshot to try and find an entry long once the area is tested and confirmed. Or you can simply just go to bed like me. Now, for those that stuck around and traded it, you know what happened. This thing continued back up to 1609. So we had a five-point trade up, a five-point trade back down, a five-point trade back up. That's 15 points. And Wall Street hasn't even opened for Monday morning's trading. This is Sunday night Globex. Moving on, price goes up and puts in a swing high at 16.20 and a half early in the week. We get some back and forth action. We had some tweets here trading off of the 05 and the 06 level. If you'd like to see those, go to our Facebook page. Just go to facebook.com and type in e-mini futures trading. That'll take you right to our page. You can also uh, visit us on Twitter, twitter.com slash CFRN. 
I'll put those links into the chat room for you here shortly. As price moved over into this area, we sent out a tweet. Now we're into Tuesday's trade. We said consider being long above 1607 or short below 1598, whichever presents first. Uh, Michael, can I send this uh, chat over to you? Sure, send it over. Okay, stand by, Chris. I'm sending you to Michael. And I'm ready. And there we go. All right. Yeah. And somebody's blowing up my phone over here. Let's see who that is. Yeah. Okay. Uh. All right, Michael. As I continue here, got you got the chat. I got the chat. And I'm sending you one as well. And then, guys, I'll get right back to my commentary. Apologize for the interruption, but sometimes this is live radio, and uh, sometimes things happen. All right, back to you. The tweet said to consider being long above 07 or short below 98. Now, we did get a trigger above 07. It gave us two points. Then it gave us a point and a half. Then it gave us another point and a half. Then it came down, got below this weekly zone at 01, triggered us at 98, okay? gave us a really nice trade down to 94. Nice in that it all happened within about 20 to 30 minutes. These are hourly candles, but if you drill down to a smaller time frame, you'll be able to see it. And when it got here to 1594, which as we, we told everyone going into this trade that we had an obstacle at 94 on the short side. So when we got to 94, I sent a message out that said, consider taking your profits here. Just like I did up here at 09, I sent it out here and said, consider taking them at 94. Those who did pocketed four points on the trade and didn't lose it to this. Okay. Worst case, if you chose not to get out of that trade, you would have moved your stop to break even here, eh, and it would have been one that got away. Either way, it turned out to be a very nice trade. Okay, so price reverses gets us back up above the 1601, 1602. We consolidate for three hours here. We move back up through the 1607. Now, that number is just as good here as it was over here. That hasn't changed. We fly through 07. We get up to the next weekly zone at 1415. We consolidate for one, two, three, four hours. Now, that's what weekly trading zones are really all about. And by the way, these zones go out to our partners prior to the market opening every Monday morning. We expect price, when it reaches a weekly trading zone, to pause to consolidate, to decide if it's going to continue its advance higher or if in fact it's going to retreat and return to the zone below because it's going to do one or the other. That's just the way it works. It's not magic, it's not voodoo, it's not any of that. Just like down here, Knowing the market would have trouble getting through 1594 and that it could potentially reverse and that everyone should take their profit there, it's not a secret. It's all in knowing how to read the chart. That's what we strive to teach you if you become a partner is how to read the chart. Once you know how to read the chart, then we can teach you how to trade the market. Okay? But it's impossible to learn how to trade the market until you know how to read the chart. Now, can you operate some kind of a little indicator or read some kind of message in a chat box, you know, without knowing how to read the chart or trade the market? Yeah, but that's only going to get you so far for so long, okay? And your, your future, your fate is in someone else's hands. What we do is we attempt to 
put your future in your own hands, in your hands. You take the reins. You're driving the bus. It's better. Trust me, it is. It's a little overwhelming at first, a little confusing, and you might, we all question, can I do this? Can I learn all of this? The answer to that is it's a very deep subject. There are many moving parts. You don't have to know everything about the markets in order to be able to trade them, but you do have to know enough. Now, what Michael and I have attempted to do is we've attempted to reduce everything to the lowest common denominator so that you can learn enough to get started. And of course, as you are learning and you come out of the simulator and you start to trade live because you've gotten profitable in the simulator, your educational journey never really ends. What does end is that never-ending search for the Holy Grail. That one thing that's going to allow you to never be wrong again. Never again will you know the pain of being stopped out. That's just fantasy. It's not real. It doesn't exist. And I'm not just saying that because I haven't found it. I'm saying it because it doesn't exist. Now, I could spend the next 30 minutes telling you why it is scientifically impossible for that thing to exist, but I won't burden you. If you really want to know, send me an email, support at CFRN.net, because you might be in the middle of learning something that you think is the Holy Grail, or you might even be in the midst of creating what you think is the Holy Grail. I'll be happy to tell you why, based on pure scientific principle, it cannot exist, except in your in your imagination, okay? Now, I know some people who've been at the drawing board for years, and I just wish they would ease up, stop. It's like looking for a black cat in the dark that isn't there. You can't find what's not there. So, enough of that. Let's keep moving. Price rallies, gets up here to 1415, consolidates for four hours. And then it finally makes the break. This We're into the holiday now, 4th of July, Thursday. Price confused us a bit on Monday because it got to 20 and a half, but it couldn't get to the zone. Now, once price moves this far away from one zone, it becomes a very high probability that it's going to make it to the next zone. Just like down here, price did the move. It went up. It pulled back, it continued. And then over here, it moved up, it pulled back, and it continued. It's the same thing over and over. I show you this every day. And then on Tuesday, we put in a lower high. This really started to look like it was going to be the high of the week. I commented on it a couple of times. And then on uh, Thursday, or I'm sorry, Wednesday, again, it looked like we were putting in a lower high. I even commented on the radio show, guys, this really is starting to look like it. I even drew a trend line on the chart. Some of you will remember. I said, I think this could be it. Well, look at that trend line. Look where it intersects, right there at the zone. So we come into that. Okay, there's two reasons now why this could be the high, the trend line and the zone. One, two, three three. Fourth hour, we pop through, we close above. Okay? Now, this is 4th of July. Markets, in theory, aren't even open, but yet Globex is trading, the futures are trading, stocks are not trading on Wall Street. We rally up to the next weekly trading zone at 16.24 and turn down. And then we battle that area for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hours. Okay? Locked in a very quiet range battle there. And then this morning we had the uh, non-farm payrolls and Michael, was it the unemployment numbers? Is that what? Yep, the unemployment rate. Unemployment rate. And so here is why I caution you about being flat ahead of a news event. Now, even though we had this tweet out last night, 
I said we've got high impact news coming out tomorrow morning. If this thing does not trigger before the news, in other words, we had a tweet to be long above 28 or short below 18. I said if this thing doesn't trigger before the news event, either be extremely careful or just be flat. Because no matter which side you took, there's a good chance you may have gotten stopped out. Initially, price ran north, so could you have grabbed a couple points? Well, yeah. The truth of the matter is you could have grabbed a couple of points without getting stopped out. If you had traded the reverse side of that at 1618, could you have picked up nine and three quarter points without getting stopped out? Again, the answer is yes, but I don't want you to look at this and start to develop bad habits because in most cases, when you have a high impact news event, and, in, and this morning we had two high impact news events, the non-farm and the unemployment rate, price, uh, let's just say 1608 up to 16, 30, from 08 to 30, that's a 22 point range that we covered in one, two, three hours. Okay. Now there are people, and I wrote about this on the blog last night, there are people who trade news and trade news very well. It's their specialty. It's what they do. We are not news traders. We don't claim to be. We don't attempt. Now I did in the beginning when I first started trading futures because it looks, I mean, my goodness, who doesn't want to pick up 40 points in one trade? And you can do that some days on a Fed announcement. But I learned quickly that I did not have the skill set, nor did I have the, really the funds to invest in developing the skill set to be really good at trading. And it was just, it made more sense to just climb up in the bleachers, watch the action down on the field, and when the dust settled, go back down and find my plain vanilla setup, no sprinkles, no swirls, one scoop, plain vanilla, that's all I want and all I need, give me a couple points a day, I'm just as happy as I can be. So with that said, price has now moved back up above this 16, 18 area, but look what happened in the process. It came back up and tested 18, and then we saw this uh, swing low here at 1075. We could look at that on a smaller time frame, see how it played out. Uh, perhaps when Michael is going through the recap, he'll take a peek at that. But also, this is an interesting dynamic. On the spike above the zone, look where we closed. After that big spike, we closed back below 2425, just barely. And then down here, where we spiked below the zone on the news below 1415, look where we closed, back inside of the zone at 1415. So this whole battle, if you will, today has been from zone to zone. We've spiked outside, but the bodies all remain inside of the zones. I would be willing to go out on a limb and say that uh, chances are we will close inside of these zones right here, 15, 24. Now, how does that make you money? It doesn't. If we close inside of the zones, does it matter one way? No, not really. I'm just kind of stating what at the moment appears to be the obvious. Now, there's a question from John. I did not see your tweets today. These came out last night, John. Let me show you where they were. Now, when I tweet them out on the, when I, when I post on the Facebook page, and let me explain to some of you that have been following for a while why I do this now. Twitter limits you to 140 characters. That's it. And it cuts you off. With the Facebook post on our Facebook page, E-Mini Futures Trading, I can wax as eloquent as I want, I can put charts in there, and when I hit post, it immediately creates a Twitter post, but then it cuts it off right at 140 characters, 
and it creates a link that takes you to the post on this page. And so you read the snippet on Twitter, if you're following me with the Twitter app, and then you click the hyperlink in the Twitter post, opens up a Facebook window in your web browser. You can have a, use a Facebook app, but you can also just use your web browser. Just click the link and it'll open up in here. And so last night, here's what the tweet said. It said, Wall Street has not yet had an opportunity to respond to the European interest rate decision or Draghi's speech. The euro itself did fall over 100 pips in trading today. I was writing this last night. While America took the day off to celebrate, is it good news or bad news for the U.S.? I don't know. How will Wall Street react? I don't know. As you do know, we're not news traders. Many traders are, and some do it incredibly well. We do our very best to avoid the news and wait for markets to settle down after the fact. Consider being long above 1628 or short below 1618, whichever presents first. Use the weekly trading zones to establish targets and the slingshot to enter. This gives you a to the tick entry with exactly eight ticks of risk. Of course, you can trade it from the hourly perspective as well. Simply use the techniques I have taught you. And then I was off to see the fireworks. So actually, this tweet went out before I even left to go for the fireworks last night. And then I talked about the news that we were going to have this morning. And I talked about how we had been at that zone for 17 hours and about not underestimating the power of a quiet market. Okay. So if you go to the Twitter page, I'll show you how those corresponding, let's see if it'll load up quick. I'm well overdue for my uh, reboot. And it and it reminds me every time I try to do something. <laughs> it's live, unscripted. Yeah. Hmm. I can't even grab this. Oh, there we go. Let me just get it out of the way. Now, can't we? Can't they just go and sign up at Facebook, like make friends at Facebook or something like that, and then, uh, and yep. then they would get an email as soon as you just post it to Facebook. You wouldn't even have to involve Twitter. Mm-hmm. Right? Is that something else that we can do? That may even be better than the tweet. I do. I do believe that is correct. Okay, John says now I get it. Okay, good. So when that Twitter page finally loads in a while, I'll show it to you. I just I haven't rebooted in a couple of days, guys, and so I'm overdue. And if my transaction goes through tomorrow, I got to get up at like eight o'clock to go meet this guy. Almost halfway to Tucson. Wow. But if that transaction goes through, oh, I won't. I won't have to reboot for like. I can reboot like once every six months. <laughs> <laughs> with with the uh, with the terabyte drive and the, uh, the, the and the eight I'll gigs be over here, all the way over here. and the i seven <laughs> chip. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll be uh, I'll be cooking. All right. And so here we sit in between these zones. Now look what happened with these zones, guys. Just real quick, then I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Michael, we moved up, we came back, we advanced. Okay. And then we had some problems getting back down to this zone. That tells us there's some strength in the market. It takes us right back to the zone. We retrace, we take another run at the zone can't get through this is a nice little candlestick pattern here sends us right back to the zone okay we bounce this time we get through the zone and what keeps us from going to the next zone it's right there in the chart okay when I put on these uh, trades especially during the after show I, I walk you through every obstacle to the trade now, some trade setups are going to have more obstacles than others. 
some setups, because of the way price action has laid out, there will be very few obstacles. You can even find situations where, like, let's see, this one, okay? When we triggered at 98, we had no obstacles in our way all the way down to 94. That's about as high a probability setup as you can get. The market creates its own obstacles, like here when we triggered long, there was an obstacle at 0975 that the market had created, and an obstacle at 18. So, but if we're trading from 07 to 09, or if we're trading from 98 to 94, now here, see the swing high got up to 09. We missed that obstacle by three ticks. But you know what I've, I've explained to you when an obstacle like this in the market is so obvious, sellers or buyers, depending upon which direction the market is moving, all that happened here because sellers knew that 0975 was a good place for resistance and a place where they could gain traction. What did they do? They came in early. As price was rallying up, they came in three ticks early and drove it down. Where did they drive it down to? To the next obstacle. See, we went from obstacle to obstacle. And then look what happened when we got back up to this obstacle. They tried to drive it down again. See this red candle? But there was enough buying support that came in. They couldn't do it, and so it turned. But that, again, that's not voodoo, witchcraft, you know. That is learning how to read a chart. And if you become a partner, that's what we'll try to do is to teach you, to help you learn to read a chart just like a newspaper. Then once you can read it, then you can trade it okay each one of these candles has a story to tell if you'll just be still and listen in closing last night I talked about the elevator pitch some of you know what that is and some of you don't when CFRN was just a startup I was asked for my elevator pitch to be honest I had never heard the term before However, being the clever fellow I am, I quickly explained that indeed CFRN had just relocated from a mid-rise building downtown into a single story structure and no longer required an elevator. What happened next is pretty obvious. He laughed and then he told me to relax. And then he told me what it was, the elevator pitch. The elevator pitch, speech, or statement is a short summary used to quickly and simply define a person, profession, product, service, organization, or event, and right here, this is what's important, its value proposition. In other words, if you have an idea for a business or whatever it might be, and you get an audience with a venture capitalist, this is just one example you need to be able to convey to that individual everything there is about your business that's important and why he should invest money in you and you need to be able to do it in 30 seconds. Now most of us go, whoa, wait a minute, I've got a two-hour PowerPoint. Exactly. They're not going to sit through a two-hour PowerPoint until you hook them with the elevator pitch. Okay, you got it. You got 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, a person's mind starts to wander. You got to get in there quick, get the attention, and then maybe they'll give you an audience where you can unfold the two hour PowerPoint. Okay, now they're going to be tweeting and texting during your in the dark during the presentation. That That's why they turn the lights down during those things because they. They aren't paying much attention. They're either going to write you a check or they aren't. But don't let me digress too much. So once I knew what an elevator pitch was, I was pretty excited because I thought, well, I'll write one. And because I'm a man of many words, not as many as my friend Frank, but still a man of many words. I love you, Frank. <laughs> Is Frank here? Um, it doesn't matter. So. 
I think huh. he was going to plan he, on. He knows I'm just picking that in. Here. All right. So anyhow, or anywho, as they say, I began to craft my elevator pitch. What's CFRN? What's it all about? Why is it important? Why should anybody care? Now, this is back in the days when internet radio was the fodder of stand-up late-night comedians on TV. No one ever thought it was going to become a reality, okay? But today, there is hardly any terrestrial radio stations that don't simulcast over the internet. We were one of the very first pure internet plays when it came to radio. And so we, you know, there was a bit of a struggle there trying to, and I, if you go back and read, there's podcasts and blog posts where I talk about the fact that internet radio will someday be in the dashboard of your car. And no one could conceive of that at the time. It didn't make sense. We didn't even, we hardly even knew what Wi-Fi was back in 2005. Technology has moved very quickly. And so I worked to, you know, hone my elevator pitch. But now that we're, we're beyond all of that, CFRN is no longer a startup and we, you know, we have a working business model. But for myself as a trader, okay, I still have an elevator pitch. And I've managed to, you know, remember I said 30 seconds, that's the limit. I've managed to refine my elevator pitch as a trader down to three lines. That's right, three lines. And there they are. All you got to do is put a weekly trading zone below this right here. Price moves up, price comes back to test that zone, and away we go. And between here and here, that's my two points for the day. Let me say that again. There's a weekly trading zone. Price breaks through that zone. It pulls back to test the zone to confirm that it is going to play its role as support. And then it begins to move north. I don't, if the setup is proper, okay, and, and you have to be patient and wait for the right setup, but you've got time, right? Okay. When this point and this point, when there's more than two points, I have no resistance to my trade. There's no friction, okay? Price moves up. It pulls back to test the weekly trading zone and as it begins to move north all I have to do is enter the trade here and get out here if it doesn't break this high I don't care if it doesn't put in a new swing high that's okay if it doesn't ever make it up to the next weekly trading zone okay because my money is made from here to here. That's how I consolidated my elevator pitch to just three lines. And Michael, with that, it's all yours. All right. Oh, guys, today, 5 p.m. Eastern, Releasing Kings, the podcast with our friend John Garfield, who is also a CFRN partner. John is a noted Christian author. He is the author of the book, Releasing Kings for Ministry in the Marketplace. If you Google it, you can go to his website, releasingkings.com. Uh, go have a look, kind of get caught up on who John is and his ministry. It's big. It's all over the world, conferences and You'll learn more going to his side, and then tune in today live, 5 p.m. Eastern. Now, I'm going to leave this go-to webinar meeting open. Normally, we close it at the end of the radio show, but today I'm just going to leave it open, and we'll use the same room for...
the afternoon show releasing kings and so you can just shrink the browser window down if you want go do whatever it is you need to do on a Friday afternoon and then be back here at 5 p.m. Eastern for episode number two of releasing kings the podcast with author and CFRN partner Mr. John Garfield and Michael it's all yours all right I'm gonna hit mute so I don't disturb you. All right. And I should... Well, we have a fair amount well, that, of... Well, that's presumptuous of me to say that just because I'm on mute, I don't disturb you. But... Um, no, well, no, that's okay. Well, I mean, you, could, you could obviously send me text messages and things of uh, that nature. But, all right. <laughs> but we'll let it go. <laughs> okay, it's all yours. All right. Buddy. I can see your charts. Got it. Good. I'm going to start the recording. Now, um, good afternoon, everyone. Today is the fifth day of July, two thousand thirteen. It's Friday. It is, is it? It's our first Friday of July. It's the end of the first week of the second half of the year. Um, I should bring up uh, the spreadsheet. We can go over the spreadsheet. Let's do that. Um, here it is. All right. Our results for today. We had plus 17 ticks in the Russell, plus 8 ticks in crude oil, plus 7 ticks in gold, and plus 4 ticks in copper. I don't know what that puts us up on the day exactly, but it's pretty good. Uh, 17 plus 15 is 320 plus 50 is 380 dollars a contract. Um, we did it all in 10 trades, and. We made our two points and our two points equivalent, which is $100 per contract, in 22 minutes on four trades this morning. At that point, we're at $110 a contract. Um, so far, for the month of July, we are up $952.50 in the four trading days in July so far. So we're averaging just about $225 a day, roughly. Um, we have, if you apply an $8 per turn commission to every trade that we've taken so far, you would still be up a net of $568.50, which is still pretty good if you consider that we've only been going four trading days for the month of July. Um, last month, last month we were up $5,220. The month before that, we were up $6,292. You know, if you if you take the first six months of the year, we were up just over $30,000 per contract in the live trading room alone in the first six months of 2013. Um, yeah, and that's one contract. Suppose you had two. Two, then you would be up you know, 60000 or three. It would be 90000 or four. It would be 120000 My golly, that would make you, that would make you right up there where... Obama happens to think most of the United States is. Or, wait a minute, who was that? Romney? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> the point of the matter is, for the first six months, we were up 30 grand um, in the live trading room alone, okay, on a single contract. You can make that whatever you want. And actually, you should do better than I do because I'm trading eight different markets and answering questions from hundreds of people and most of the partners do do better than I do and that's that's a fact they should you should be making multiples of what I'm making because you don't miss all the trades that I miss now that said let's go over the trades that I missed today <laughs> we'll go over the trades that I took and the trades that I missed if you have not taken a free trial with us and you want to take a free trial with us go to www.cfrn.net forward slash apply sign up for the free trial. In the free trial you get five days in our live trading room. You get access to all of our indicators, all of our knowledge, all of our indicators, our charting platform, to Dwayne and myself. You get to see the weekly trading zones. You get access to everything but the members area and the weekly partners meetings. Okay. And after that five days we'll make you an offer. See if you like it. And if you do. Well, you can become a partner and get into our live trading room every single day. Now, 
it's probably important to note here that when you become a partner, you're not just getting a set of indicators in a single setup that's, you know, that's pretty much what I work with in the live trading room every day. You do get a set of indicators. You get a lifetime license to the indicators. Um, and, and did you get a setup? You get a single one, but you get a whole bunch more than that. But you also get a whole community full of people that are all trying to do the same thing. Some of them are doing it very well. But they're all striving to make money trading commodities, trading futures, trading whatever whatever markets they, they prefer to trade. You know, not everybody's going to trade crude oil. Not everybody's going to trade the ES. Not everybody's going to trade gold. Not everybody's going to trade the Russell. Some people will trade, you know, copper, <laughs> orange juice, lumber, feeder cattle. You know, whatever people choose to trade, we're all trying to do the same thing. It's important that you keep that in mind. And, you know, while we're all trying to do the same thing, we're all doing the same thing. You know, we're using this four tick range charts on every single market. We're using the same trade setup, the same set of indicators, the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. All right. Enough on that. Let me, uh, let's go into the trades that I actually did take care today on crude. I didn't, I didn't trade a ton on the crude today. Um, just a couple of trades, if I remember right. Let's see. That was not today. No, that was July 2nd. Here's today. A few trades. That was not today. Here we go. All right, so our first trade on crude was right here. We made two ticks on that. We shorted on the down close off the BBC, and we took profit right down here. made a couple ticks profit on that. The next trade on crude was over here. We shorted over here, and... Is this crude? This isn't crude. This is soybeans. Why am I looking at soybeans and talking about crude? That's <laughs> not even the right market. Today we took one trade on soybeans. It was right here. We took a break even on it. <laughs> Where's my crude chart? I thought I slid the crude over here. Here we go. All right. Now, the crude. Um, our first trade was right here on crude. We took a couple ticks profit on that. Um, right in here. All right, the down close right here. We took a couple ticks profit on that one. We missed this trade, this trade, this trade, a whole bunch of trades in there, and we ended up taking one more trade somewhere. I don't, I don't seem to have it highlighted, but I believe it was one of the trades where I just showed my dom throughout the trade for everybody in the live trading room. Anyway, hmm. Any, anyway, we took six more ticks profit on some trade somewhere in here. I don't know where it was. It could have been right in here because I didn't I didn't I drew the trend line, I didn't put a an ellipse on it. So it was six more ticks somewhere on one of these trades that we took. Um however I did it, I did it in the live trading room and everybody saw me do it. But uh I'm just looking, I don't see I only marked up the one trade there. And we took two on crude today. Anyway, there was another trade in here, but what we look for is a close above the trend line or below the trend line, depending on what direction we're going in. In this case, over here on a long side, we would be looking for a close above the trend line with a bullish divergence down here on the on the slingshot. Um, it worked again. It works a lot. It works a lot. <laughs> a lot. Over here, we would have been looking for a down close with bearish divergence on the slingshot. And look, it worked again. And over here, this one didn't work. This one worked, this one worked, this one worked, that one worked. But that's it. That's all we did on crude today, guys. I don't want to rush through this because I know that um, we are not going to have David on. So I want to take my time and answer any questions anybody has. Does anybody have any questions about this? I, mean, I know normally I, I get right through it because we normally have uh, a bunch of guests lined up and stuff like that. But today we do not. Okay. Well, today, this is the Russell. Okay. And on the Russell, we took a few trades in here. Um, the very first trade of the morning was right here, and we had missed that. Now, Matt, is Matt in here? Let me just check over here and see. Matt, you had asked this morning about um, some stuff from 
yesterday. Uh, wrong mat's in here. There's a mat in here, but not the right mat. Anyway. There were trades in here that we missed to start out the day right here on the Russell. It down closed below the trend line with bearish divergence. That moved down about six or eight ticks. Yeah, that that's it. That green line, third rail divergence. That's, yeah, there's sweet stuff in there. Nice opportunities. And again and again and again. There's another one right here. This one we did actually take this morning, and on our first tick, we took on our first trade, we took six ticks profit on the Russell right here on this one. Um, then we had to wait a little bit. It changed directions in here. Um, there was actually a long trade in here that I didn't see. I didn't see happen. But there's a lot of trades that I don't see happening because I'm doing too many things. The next trade was a. It wasn't this down close here. I had drawn the trend line, but we didn't have any divergence left on that one. It pulled back again and it gave us something with a little bit of divergence in here. On that one, I think I got one tick profit. I moved my stop to plus a tick. Um, I missed this one over here. I grabbed a little bit on this one. It looks like I grabbed two ticks on this one. Okay, I grabbed a couple of ticks on that one. And then I got a little bit more on this one over here on the up close. I can't see what my numbers actually say, but I did get something <laughs> something else right there. I think I got eight ticks on that, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, and that put me at plus 17. Um, plus 17 ticks on the day right there on the Russell. Now, this one ended up moving up pretty well. The thing that I was concerned about when it was happening was we were pulling back on an uptrend. And I had thought I had drawn the bottoming thing in right here and said, if we don't put in a lower swing right here, by the time the green line gets into the cycle, then we're going to change directions. And, well, that is bottoming. Obviously, I can go back and look at this. Um, but it did change directions. We got long. We took a little piece out of that, and I believe that was it for our trading on the Russell. Um, that was it for our trading on the Russell. We didn't take any more trades. Um, we highlighted an area in here, but the black line got up above the BBC, so there was no trading in there. Okay. Um, that was that was pretty much it on our morning for the Russell. Okay, we ended the Russell plus 17 ticks. Um, Michael, is it possible to set an alert when a certain candlestick is painted on the chart? Do you mean a certain candlestick pattern? Like a Japanese candlestick pattern? It is. I think it's possible to do that. And if you mean just at a certain level, you can also set an alert at levels, price levels. Okay. Um, yeah, right now on the Russell, there's a long trade right here at 14.2. Okay, right. If you want to do candlestick patterns, you go into indicators. I think it's in here, TA Live, Japanese candlesticks. You can do it in here. Turn on whatever it is you want. I don't know if they have an actual alert. Common settings. It'll show it on the actual candlestick. Is where you know, like if I want to see the the dark cloud. No, we can't do dark cloud cover. If I want to see a dragonfly doji. Let's say we turn that thing on and we'll make it red, but we're going to make it really big so it jumps right out at us. Now all the dragonfly dojis should have something red on them. And where's your dragonfly doji? There's got to be one in here somewhere. Not sure. I'd choose that on a day where we don't have dragonfly dojis. Um, I will find one. Usually we have some. I know there's a bunch of red candles, but those are not dragonfly dojis. I had to do it on the ES, didn't I? You know, on crude or gold, we'd have these things all over the place. Eh, anyway, that's what you have to do. Okay. Um, let's see. Speaking of gold, I didn't do gold yet, did I? I don't think I did. Speaking of gold, we had some opportunity on gold today. We ended plus 7 on gold. 
We missed a ton of trades, as we always do. But we were able to take some profit out of the market, as, as we usually do. Um, let's see, right at 9.30 here at the open, the MA1 and BBC were a little mixed up right here, but this down close right here was a shorting opportunity. Uh, it's depending where you filled, you may, yeah, you probably would have been okay with that. Um, your stop should have been up here. So you would have been okay with that. There was another one right in here, a pull back up. This would have been the down close below the trend line. All right, another one right here. I'm just looking down at the bottom at the divergence between the green line and the cycle. As long as you still have divergence, you can still take these pullbacks. You know, if there's room for it to run, you can still take it. So it was good all the way until right here. Okay, no more trades right there on the short side. Then it tried to put something together here on the long side. If you jumped in long right here, you would have stopped up. You would have been able to go short in several places. Uh, one, two, three, four, five spots to go short, and uh, one to go long. And the one that the one that went long would have stopped you out. Uh, turns around and it gives you the opportunity again here on the short side. You would have gotten your money right back. Um, another one right in here. And you know, gold just provided a ton of opportunity. We didn't take our first trade until over here. On our first trade in gold, we only took, looks like we took one tick profit on our first trade in gold. Um, our next trade, we added on to that a little bit. I think we took a few ticks on the second trade. And a break even here. And it was just a long trade. A minute ago, I told you about the long trade here at 14.2. Right? I said right here, there's a long trade on gold at 14.2. But there were a bunch of trades that we missed in here. Okay, a bunch of trades. Can I show you the GGC at the news at 8.30 non-farm? Well, it wasn't just non-farm. It was non-farm and the unemployment rate. But sure, I can show it to you. Here it is. Well, 8.29 had all this. And then finally it came out here at 8.30. And you can see all these bars from here to here happened in one minute. So is that tradable in there? Probably not. You, you know the dom would be jumping up and down so fast. You just have to enter a market when you think it's when you think it's right, and I hope you got it near the near the spot you wanted to enter it. Right? But not a good way to trade. But there was there was a bunch of activity bunch of movement this morning. All right, and that's good. Being that it's the day after a holiday and you know a midweek holiday and all that send kind of thing sort of stuff. It's good that it happened that way. Um all right, so that was gold. We ended up plus 7 ticks on gold. All right, I remember drawing this in here and saying if it doesn't break down through there we're going to have bottoming action. It did eventually get down through there. It's actually a head and shoulders pattern. You see the heads right here. Shoulder head and a shoulder and this was the level it needed to break down below it happened to go inside with my my box once it broke down below there it was a pretty quick movement down and that's usually what happens when you have a head and shoulders break neckline break like that it's usually a pretty quick movement down after that but <laughs> yeah he's holding the cane with his hand that's why his shoulders lower he's leaning on it um, anyway, that is gold, all right? Now, the soybeans, we touched soybeans for just a few minutes here earlier when I thought it was, when I thought it was crude oil, um, but it's actually soybeans. We had one trading opportunity on soybeans right over here. We got short, and we ended up taking a break even on the trade. We waited around in that trade for a few minutes. I mean, this whole thing happened, but this happened at 11, and this, you know, it got down here an hour, and hour and 15 minutes later and that's just way too long for me. Um, it did have another opportunity in here, a shorter one right in here and another one right in here. Okay, for a couple more, a couple more spots there. Okay. In there, well, you would have had to have drawn that trend line again. Take that wick into account. So it would have been like that that move and then you didn't put in a lower swing but if you ignore that then you would have been looking at you know, the 
down close right there. Down close below the trend line. That's what you would have been looking at. All right. And that was it on soybeans. We made no money on soybeans today. We didn't make any money on the NQ either, but you know, there's a ton of NQ trades. For those of you guys who like to trade this NQ, um, you know, there's as many trades on the NQ as there is on gold. Probably even more. To to look for the trades without looking at price, just look down here at the divergence on the slingshot. And say, okay, there's divergence right here. Price is probably pulling back and there's probably some sort of an opportunity to trade. Right? So what you do is draw your trend line, find your close down below the trend line, and that's your spot to enter, which would be right there. Look again. More divergence down here. Price is probably pulling back. It was. Look for your down close below the trend line. It's right there for the move down. There's divergence on the bottom. Look up here at the top. Where would you draw your trend line? Well, you, in this case right here, you would draw up these, and then you get the wick, and then you get the down close. So you wouldn't have any opportunity in this one right here. You look down again, you have divergence again, raise your trend line up here like that. Your down close below the trend line is right there. You get a bullish cross, and it's all nothing in here. Nothing to trade in there, nothing to trade in there, nothing to trade in there. Then it starts to run. You look down here at your divergence. You look up here. Where would you draw your trend line? Right down the top like this. Okay. Right down the top. So you look for your up close above. There it is. Get divergence again. Where would you draw your trend line? Oh, okay, we missed one little spot. And we missed this, but it was sort of a continuation of this one. Over here, you get your nice divergence again. Where would you draw your trend line? Why? You would draw it down the top like this. Okay, you're up close above the trend lines right there for the move up. You get your divergence again. Look up here. Where would you draw your trend line? Well, you would draw it just like this. All right. Now here you get an up close with a black bar, red cycle heading down. You would still take it. You lose eight ticks on that. Okay, but you made you know whatever here, whatever here, um, and on the way down five times right there. You're bound to have a losing trade eventually. Okay, so it changes directions. That you know that loss right there. So okay, so it's changing directions. So you have your bearish cross. You pull back up, test to the BBC. You have your divergence down here. You're going to draw your trend line, just like that. Well, actually, on the down close, if the cycle was red, you don't need a trend line. But in this case, you draw your trend line, just like that. The down close is right in here, so you get short, get short, you get short. There's no divergence on this one. There is some divergence on this one, but the cycle's headed up. So that may be the bottom right there. It goes down a little more. You don't have any opportunity right in here either way goes down some more. You look for your divergence. Where can you draw a trend line? Actually nowhere on this first run, but on the second one right here. It drops some more. And that's all in the first 45 minutes. You know, the NQ, if we were to trade the NQ every day, we wouldn't be able to trade anything else because we'd be so busy trading the NQ. And, and that's that's a lot why we don't trade it as, as much as we trade other things. It's five bucks a tick. Five bucks a tick, and we'd be trading it all day. Um, but there you have it. That's the NQ. And, you know, there are a ton of trades, a ton of trades on the NQ today. Every day. Every day, especially if there's volatility. You know, and there was certainly some volatility today. Um, let's see, the ES. We pointed out a couple of things on the ES, though we didn't take anything on the ES. There was a shorting opportunity in here on the ES. It dropped down a couple of points a shorting opportunity here that ended up going down to this level right here and we hit that level a bunch of times and you know you should have had break even on that several times um, change directions there was what was setting up was a long over here and people were asking me about it and I said you know what I don't think I'd take that long because I think it's going back down to the zone and it did and it bounced off the zone and then it went through the zone and then it came back to test the zone um, and people were asking over here would you take this long and I said no, because it's going into the weekly trading zone. Um, it went up to the zone, it got rejected by the zone, and then it went through the zone. And that's not unusual behavior. The fact that it got rejected by the zone, that's why I don't take trades going into the weekly trading zone. Because they are often rejected by the weekly trading zone. 
Maybe not permanently. Well, never permanently. Price can always eventually go through it. But for the time frame that I'm looking at, it's enough. Okay. Um, let's see. Over here, I had copper around here somewhere. Copper. Where's my copper chart? Hey, uh, I'm here, yes. just so you know, and I'm not, there's no need to rush, but uh, there is a short trade setting up on the ES. Do you have any interest okay. in placing a live trade? Or um, just walking, I don't, maybe not trading it, but walking the folks through it? Okay, I, I can walk everyone through it. I don't have an ES DOM up. Hey, there's my, uh, there's my Dragonfly Doji. It almost made one there a second ago. But I can walk everyone through it. Okay. Here's, here's what we look for. Let me bring up the picture. Bring up I'm the just picture. double checking to make sure we have everything. Yep. We do. Here we go. We'll look at the short side of this. Okay. Step one is the MA1 crosses below the BBC. It did that right here. Step two is price pulls away from the BBC. Right in here, it pulled away from it. Step three is price pulls back up to test the BBC. And it's now done that. And you have to have a down close. That's part of step three. It's a down close. And step four is divergence. You need bearish divergence with a red cycle. All right, we got an up close on that bar, but it's still okay. It's still okay. If we get a down close on this bar, it's still good because the cycle is still red. And this black step line is still below the BBC. So a down close on this bar would still be all right. If the high of this bar is 1619, then we know the low of that bar is going to be 1618. If the high stays there at 16.19, we know the low is going to be 16.18. So if you get the down close, that's going to be your entry right there at 16.18. Okay, if you get the down close, that's what we'll be looking for. All right. Now, some would, of course, ask, is it possible to enter that trade on a stop? What are your thoughts on that? On the ES, you can. Mm -hmm. On the ES, on soybeans, on copper. On slower moving markets like this, you can you can certainly do that. You could put a sell stop on at sixteen seventeen seventy five. You can't put a you can't put a sell stop on at sixteen eighteen because that can get triggered in and you still may not get the down close. You got to put it one tick beyond the down close. If we know the down close is going to be at sixteen eighteen, then you can put a sell stop on one tick below that, and that will get filled if you get a down close at sixteen eighteen. It'll be off by one tick from the from the exact entry at 1618, but at least you don't have to babysit it as much. You, know, you don't have to keep your finger on the trigger. I do that. I do that with soybeans, and I do that with copper. I'll put that sell stop on. You know, a lot of times with the beans, and there's a good example happened today with the beans when uh, when you get your setup. If you don't get filled right away, then you could miss the whole move. You know, this whole thing could go down like this in a couple of minutes and never pull back. That's that's why it's good on the soybeans. Um, you know, the ES, the ES, you can see right now, it's not that there's, um, it's not that there's no liquidity in it. There's a ton of liquidity in it. It's just that it's not moving very much. You know, it's Friday after a midweek holiday. And, I think we're losing, we're losing uh, momentum. Yeah, in fact, uh, in regards to liquidity, we have uh, 10,121 contracts on the bid, 9,200 on the ask, and I'm only looking at, I think, 10 levels deep. Yeah, and there's usually twice as many, 10 levels yeah, deep. Yeah. In fact, let me look and see what our daily uh, see what our daily volume is today. <clears throat> that is one million one hundred and twelve thousand contracts. So we did break a million. That's pretty good for the yeah, day after a holiday. A fair amount. Yeah. Now this trade is about to be disqualified right here because the black step line is crossing over the BBC. It's crossing up above the BBC. If that crosses up, then we're no longer looking for short trades. And I'm going to go to my DOM when that happens, and I'm going to click Cancel All. You always have to remember, once you you know, initiate a trade like that, you want to enter it on a stop, and then another market starts to go off, and you get you know, 
to looking at that, you forget that you had an order on with the ES. That thing could come back, I mean, you know, a couple hours from now, the market starts trading the other way, whatever happens, you get triggered into an order that you no longer, I mean, there's no, there's no setup or criteria for you to get into that trade two hours from now. Really important, just go back and hit cancel all, okay? And most of us have to learn that the hard way a couple of times, and then it becomes a part of our, you know, ritual that we just do it without even really thinking. We just cancel all. Hmm. All right. Um, you see right there, the black line just got up above. And what Dwayne's talking about is the hard way is you actually forget your orders on there and you get filled and you lose money. And I still do that. You hear your headphones, it goes thunk, or if you got your speakers on, it yep. goes thunk. Yep. And you know you did something wrong. <laughs> You're like, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Now, guys, as Michael is finishing up his recap today, if you have any questions about anything, uh, there's a lot of you here, but we do want to answer questions. So type them in. Okay, type them in. I got a text message uh, from David. He had planned to be with us this morning, but he's hung up with somebody in a meeting. Let me read it. Uh, <laughs> the battery died in his car on the way to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have someone in town, and I don't think I'll be available for the radio today. I'm very sorry. Have a great weekend. Tell everybody I said hello. Have a great weekend, and I will see you all on Monday. So with that said, Michael, if you want to take your time, I know you've got things you have to do as well. So, but, uh, Yeah, yeah, I do have children to feed and stuff like that. But, but uh, I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. I'll get to that. All right. I have to feed these hungry minds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so if you've got well, questions, guys, the type them in. Here. I can stop the recording for the recap. I'll stop that now. Okay. Um, again, if you have not taken a free trial with us, go to cfrn.net forward slash apply. Sign up for the free trial there. If you have taken the free trial and you want to become a partner, then send us a quick email at um, send us a quick email at support at cfrn.net, or you can just call nine four nine four two e mini or nine four nine four two three sixty four sixty four. Okay, and we'll we'll get you set up. Um, all right, there. I'm gonna stop the recording. All right, the recording is stopped. Now there were two things two things that came in. One was how do you put the lines on the chart for the weekly trading zone? Um, well first you have to know what the weekly trading zones are. You get that when you become a partner. But second, to put the lines on the chart, you're sent an email that has a string of numbers in them and you would just type the numbers right in here. Like let's say, looking at this, let's say 1619 was one and 1620 you would just type them in like that. Make sure the count is right. You're sent the count with the weekly trading zones. And you say, okay. And there they are. There's the weekly trading zones. That's all. Okay. Um, Frank says, copper, 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 copper. On copper, you need to down close below this trend line to get a short trade. On gold, Don Don says, on the gold just now, I drew a couple of trend lines connecting the top of the high with the bottom low. Well, we're supposed to either connect the highs for short trades or the lows for long trades. The trend lines that I drew were back here. You connect the bottoms for short trades and the tops for long trades. I did not recap the copper. Oh, that's what Frank was getting at. Okay, I didn't recap copper. I took a trade on copper, too. Um, back here. Let's scroll back on copper. Whoa, that's the wrong day. It's not even copper. It's not even copper. <laughs> Hang on. That was, that was bonds over there. If you get a down close below this trend line over here on the 30-year bonds, that's a short trade. Let me find my copper chart. Hold on a sec. I seem to have buried my copper chart. GG. So, in other words, what you're trying to say is that you would trade the bonds exactly the same way you would trade the copper? 
Of course. The only thing changes. The only thing that changes is the symbol. That's yep. guys. You haven't heard that anywhere else. I don't think. Um, it'll probably start to catch on. I don't know. Somebody else will figure out a way to do it. But it is unique when you think about it. You learn one setup, and then all you have to do is go find a market that is expressing volatility and participation, and then you take that trade that you know oh so well because that's your bread and butter go-to setup, and then you just go apply it to a market that has movement. Seriously, all you have, once you learn it, all you got to do is show up and put on the trade. Now, I'm not saying it's easy, but if you follow that method, it does, it can be simple. Let me say it that way. All right. And on copper, Floyd, I got to send you something. And John T, I got to send you something. On the copper right here, um, we had a bullish cross, a pullback, tested the BBC with an up close, and we got long on the copper right in here. We took four ticks profit on the copper this morning. Okay, that was our copper trade. Um, let's see, right now, copper had a short trade right back here. And it's pulling back up to give another opportunity, probably. In the big picture, do I expect bonds to go up or down? And big picture. Do you mean like in an hourly chart or do you mean like, you know, for the quarter or the year? I have no idea. David is out today, Ed. Um, uh, my chart set up the Russell for July and present no data. You I guess he's saying in. that your layout, so yeah, you'll tell him. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to, I'm going to, Floyd, I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you my current layout anyway. But you just type in the symbol R L M dash, and it's going to present you with a whole bunch. U is what you want. I'm sorry, R L M dash M. <laughs> U three is what you want. R L M. You just got to type on it. Just left click on the chart and type R L M dash M U three. But I'm going to send you my layout anyway. Okay, as we spoke about yesterday. Um, all right. Anything showing enough volatility to trade this afternoon? I don't see any volatility anywhere right now. Gold might have something. Crude might have something. Soybeans are done. Copper might have something, but I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing anything worth trading here. You know, if you're up on the day, take take the rest of the day off. If you're down on the day. And take the rest of the day off. <laughs> there's, there's not much, not much volatility on any of these markets right now. You know, and I'm looking at eight different markets. Um, yeah, and and with eight different markets, if you can't find any volatility, and and there again, guys, if it's not there, don't force the trade because there'll be another day, there'll be another trade. And the thing I talked about earlier about my little setup, the one I like, where I showed you the three lines of my elevator pitch. Uh, I don't have to take every trade that comes along. Now, in the beginning, we want you, as you're learning in the live trading room, we want you to become very mechanical, like you're working on an assembly line. We want you to spot it, execute it, manage it, and exit it over and over and over and over. Okay, don't you don't even have to concern yourself right away with the bigger picture stuff. Just get good at spotting the setup and then doing the mechanical part, which is where you actually put the trade on, and then you manage it without being all tied up in a knot, sweating, you know, nervous. That's no good. If you're sweating and nervous, it's because you're trading too much size or you went live before you were ready and you really should still be working things out in the simulator okay because you cannot live your life on high alert it, it's it's not good for you not physically not mentally uh, not even spiritually it's not how we're meant to live our lives and so you if you're going to become a professional trader if you're going to learn how to trade for a living that is one of the things that you have to work out and get beyond. Part of it is when you realize that the, this next trade, 
or the trade I'm in right now is just that. It's just another trade. It does not define who I am as a trader or as a man or as a businessman or any of that. Okay, or a business owner, I should say, because when you become a trader, you become a business owner. It may be a one-employee business in the beginning, and it might always be a one-employee business, but it is a business, and you have to treat it like a business. And again, that's another area where traders often struggle because there's no accountability other than to yourself. There's no one looking over your shoulder, no one telling you what to do, when to get up, when to go on break, you know, trade this, don't trade that. Uh, the buck stops with you. And for a lot of us, that's tremendous responsibility because we've never been the boss. And even for those of us who were the boss, we had a ton of employees that kept us accountable. See? So anyway, go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. I think I interrupted you there. Oh, that's okay. It's all good. I was just saying I don't think there's anything worth trading right here this mm -hmm. afternoon. Um, you know, I'm certainly done. But um, when the slingshot, when you trade, you find you're taking way more than eight tick stops. And you do. What is the hierarchy of common errors? Um, okay. Well. Typically, the first error that people make is they don't put stops on, or they don't honor their stops. They will move their stops around, and that's that's going to blow up your account faster than faster than anything else. Second, you know, if you're trying to do what I'm doing, you're not you're not aggressive with your risk management. That's something else that a lot of people, you know, they'll say that they're they're doing the same thing I'm doing, but they're not getting the same results. Yet when they show me their charts, they're not moving their stops. You know, and if you don't move your stops, a lot of those ones that I get break even on, you're going to get minus eight on. And you know, where I don't have to recover at all, you have to recover eight. Um, the the third thing is that you know sometimes you may put a target on an actual bracket. Where, you know you have an eight tick bracket on, so you have a target of eight ticks, and so on the trades where I pick up ten or fifteen, you know ticks, or sometimes even more than that, you know twenty ticks, you'll get eight. So in that case, you know there's little little bits here and there that are getting missed, and and they add up. You know all these little things add up in the end. Um, that's that's typically what would happen what does happen if people are trying to do exactly what I'm doing and they're not getting the uh, the results. Okay. The two out of two out of three apply. Okay. Alright. Well hopefully the one where you don't put stops on, hopefully that's not the one that doesn't apply. Um, but those are the those are the typical things. Okay. Yeah, you gotta be religious with your stops. You gotta be you gotta honor those things because that's what's gonna keep you in business. You know, and when you get stopped out, it's just the cost of doing business. That's I that. did write a little bit about that last night on the uh, Facebook page as well. In this uh, ever-changing equation that we call man versus markets, you have to become the one constant integer because you really are the only thing that you control you control when you get in you control how much risk you put on you control when you get out okay? but you don't have any you have no control over anything else and every day the markets are unique every moment but <clears throat> every day because Picture this, if you will, a table, like a like some guys in, in one of the poker championships in Vegas that you see on TV. They're all sitting around this table. Just imagine this global table with every futures trader in the world. They, they've got a chair at the table. Some are small guys. 
some represent huge funds and institutions okay but it's sort of like that butterfly principle you know when he flutters his wings in the Amazon can it actually cause a tornado in you know Kansas well, <laughs> the argument says that yes uh, but my point is every one of those traders around that table and now this is all in Mark's book trading in the zone I think I may have gone almost an entire day without recommending the book shame on me because you know I always recommend the book um, not because it has any trade setups in it or indicators or methodologies for trading it just teaches you how to think about trading how to think in probabilities and if you think that's not important wow someday you're going to realize that it is important and hopefully it will be when you still have money in your account to trade with I, I promise you it is it is very very important okay so and I won't say any more than this but I have plans to have lunch with my favorite author here in the next couple days and uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, do an interview that you'll be able to listen to and possibly even participate in and I have to just leave it at that for now but uh, what I just said about learning to think in probabilities and knowing that you're the one thing that you control because all these other guys sitting around the table you never know when they're gonna add to their position enter a position exit a position have a stomach ache get a call from the wife okay now you understand I'm just trying to I'm, I'm trying to get you to create a mental picture uh, I used the poker players in Vegas at the tournament maybe it's better if you think about those dogs sitting around the table playing poker <laughs> remember that work of art <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah on, on velvet uh, yeah. see every one of those people has the ability to affect your trade and you have no control over the decisions that they make and they may be getting out of a trade not because they think the markets about to crumble but because they've reached their goal they they've made their profit they're, they're getting see there's so much and so when people tell you or try to convince you or try to sell you some bill of goods about they've figured out a way where you can you know blah 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 guaranteed that's not it's not possible there's it's not possible for you to know the minds of every one of those traders assembled around the table and you know what else half of those people they don't even know what they're going to do five minutes from now think about that if they don't even know what they're going to do how could you possibly know well, the truth is some of the stuff that I've taught you like that obstacle I showed you on that trade that got us out of the market after a beautiful four-point trade before the market turned around and ran up 20 some odd points they might not have known what they were going to do next five minutes before that happened but we knew what the herd would most probably do we knew what the high probability was not because of the individuals and not because of the phone call from the wife or the stomach ache or whatever else they're going through but because of what the chart was telling us is right there in red and green if that's what you use for your candle colors okay. usually you hear it's oh it's right there in black and white well it's right there in red and green or black and orange or black and, and white or black. whatever color you Something. use whatever color schemata you use uh, there it is so all right any questions guys any questions about anything at all anything we can help you with you don't have to become a partner for us to help you if you're trading some other thing and you're happy and content or maybe you're struggling with it but you want to keep you know you want to keep working at it because you've invested some time and energy you can ask us questions and we'll still help you why because we're just such nice guys well yeah hopefully that is part of it but I'm gonna tell you another reason and, and this is me just being completely transparent and honest with you it's called putting good seed in the ground I can't tell you how many of our partners came through 
took the free trial, looked at what we were doing, and said, hey, thanks, guys, not my cup of tea. I'm a this kind of trader, or I'm a that kind of trader, or I want to use this syndicate. Okay, great. Keep coming, hanging out with us on the radio show. Love to have you. Uh, and best wishes on your trading journey. I'd almost be willing to say 50% of our partners went through a similar type scenario and then three months, six months, nine months later came back and said, hey, remember me? I took your trial. That thing I was doing, I never really got a complete handle on it. Or, and I'd really like to look at what you're doing again because I think maybe I was that what you have would work for me. So that's why we're willing to help you. Okay, because number one, we do want to help. That's our commitment. Michael and I, years ago, when we were struggling, okay, because we're human, man. We're just like anybody else. We bleed red, okay, and <laughs> lots of it. So, yeah, buckets. Um, and we, Michael and I, together committed. We said, hey, if we ever, you know, get there, all right, if we ever achieve uh, what we're shooting for, and we're going to commit the rest of our lives, or at least a portion of it, to helping other traders who are struggling. And we are now in the position of having to hold up our end of the deal. Did God bless us? Yes. Did we work hard? Yes. Did we get lucky? Mm, I, don't, I don't like the sound of that. Uh, somebody the other day, I think it was Jonathan, said, luck is when preparation and perspiration meet up is that what he, is that how that saying goes that's an old saying <laughs> he's in here is he Jonathan, is that type is, it in hey Jonathan is that what you said perspiration and preparation not preparation no, he wasn't H. here he left oh he left okay yeah somebody else will type it in they know what it is they know what I'm talking about <laughs> um, all right there are a couple of things in here um, will I go into, there's two things. One, will I explain my, my background in trading and how I ended up trading this setup on all markets? Um, what we do right now is, is not foreign to stuff that Dwayne and I have been doing for eight years. You know, we've been doing this exact setup we've been doing for a while now. But, you know, for the past eight years we've been trading off the BBC and, you know, and various things. Um, what we came to though is structurally if you use a range chart rather than a tick chart or a volume chart or a you know a minute chart if you use a range chart then structurally across all the markets everything is the same it's just a matter of volatility it's just a matter of the market moving around if it doesn't move you don't get any trade setups if it does move you do get trade setups and because every bar is the same height, every single bar is the same height, the structure is always the same. So if the trade setup works in one market, the trade setup works in all markets because the structure is the same. So the structure is based upon price action and well, largely based upon price action. And, um, and that's all you need. You need action. That's it. If you get the action, then you get the setups and then you can place the trades. Um, personally, I you know I started trading when I was very young. Well, very young. I was 12 years old. But, um, you know, and, and I was I was lucky to have you know a grandfather who wanted to guide myself and my cousins. And you know, that is pretty. Me, that is a pretty unique uh, scenario. There, it really it is. is. It is. It really, I mean, and you know, he it. I have. I have two cousins that, that he did this with. He did it with me, my cousin Steve, who's actually three years older than me, and my cousin Danny, who's mm, a little less than a year older than me. Danny and I were in the same grades. You know, and when you talk about prep schools, you know, I went to I went to Marianapolis Prep. Danny went to uh to uh, F Phillips Academy, Exeter Academy, whatever it is. It's one of the best prep schools in the country. He ended up going there. And I think he works for the CIA now. I don't know his mother was up. Oh, really? Went to in Connecticut yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's had some big ups and downs in life though, and just having a steady job is a big up. And having one for the CIA, I guess, is is pretty good. And my cousin Steve has owned several businesses in his life, and you know he's 
but when when it all started out, I was the only one who took to it. You know, I was the one who kept reading the Wall Street Journal. You know, they were looking for the sports page, and it's not that I didn't play sports. I actually played more sports than both of them, but um, <laughs> but I you know I could see the value in it at the time, and and you know my grandfather was he was good at it. He was you know I can't say that he was a great teacher, but he was a great you know great inspiration is what he was, and and you know the first bunch of stocks that he bought for me. You know, I had, I can tell you what they were: the Republic or National Patent, Telex, and uh, Chrysler. And I still own Publica. It's probably still at the same. Last night I looked, it was still at the same price it was 30 years ago. But uh, National Patent, I made, I want to say I made 300, 330 percent on that. Telex, I made over a thousand percent on. Um, Chrysler, I made. Well, I got Chrysler at eight and a quarter, and that was back when uh, Lee Iacocca stepped in, and Chrysler was going to go under. So you know, I was in eighth grade, and, and I remember my teacher in eighth grade was, uh, her husband was, uh, not her husband, her son was a broker. And when she saw I had, you know, because I, I, was, I was pretty proud of my stock certificates, and, and I brought him to class one day, and she's like, you own Chrysler? And she's like, oh, sell, sell. And I was like, no, my grandfather says, hold on to it. So I did, and Chrysler dropped from eight and a quarter down to about two and a half bucks a share, and then it went up to about thirty-six bucks a share, and that's when I sold. Um, it actually went higher than that. It went within a year or so, it went up to forty-four bucks a share or something like that. But I was already out of it. And Telex, we got it six and an eighth, and that went up to over one hundred and six dollars a share. Um, and National Patent, I went over, and Public Ground. Those were those were my first. My first four trades in equities, and then I took the profits from those and just kept reinvesting them in, into different things. And you know, when I my grandfather had given me this book, the S&P 500, and and it had the 500 stocks, and it had you know their charts for like the fast last five years for every single stock displayed, and hmm. and I started to look at all that stuff and charting and all that. Now, then. did it actually have the charts or just the raw data, and you had to draw the charts? It it had one chart. Okay. One, like, annual chart, and then it had all the raw data for the last five years. So, you know, I could sort of picture where it was coming from or where it was going. And that's that's where it started. And then, you know, I went to school and learned a lot of stuff. And then I went in the military and learned a lot more stuff. And then I got out of the military and I went to school again and I learned a lot more stuff. And then and that's that's how it all rolled up. And Dwayne and I met and the rest is history. The rest is right in front of you. <laughs> well, yeah, that was that's my, my history in trading, you know. It's uh it's it's been good. You know, it's not a direct path, but, you know, my vocation when I was in high school, you know, it, when you when you fill out the thing that goes in the yearbook, my vocation was to be a stockbroker. But I was never actually a stockbroker. I never had a Series 7 license. I do have a Series 3 license. Um, so I'm a futures broker. But, but that's, you know, that's different. When did I get into futures? I started trading futures in the pits before the electronic markets came around. Um, I want to say it was a little before I got married, and I got married in 96. So I started doing it back then. That was when, you know all those things that, Dwayne, you know the ones, the money tree and and all that kind of stuff, the yeah. Larry Williams programs mm -hmm. and all those sorts oh, yeah. of things. You know, I, I bought one of those. I bought the Larry Williams one. It was called the money tree. I still have the discs. I, have the discs, the discs. I still have the, the VCR tapes <laughs> in a box down in my basement somewhere. Um... But I started then, and you had to you, know, you had to go out and buy some charting paper, some graph paper that you could draw your own charts on, and do all that stuff on. And I followed it for a little while, but it was way too time-consuming to do the whole one, two, three thing. Little did I realize how simple it actually is. I mean, I do it all the time right now. I do it, you know, I process it. I just eyeball it now. But I, you know, back then, there's a lot of drawing of charts and all that. Um, and then I started trading uh, options on equities. I'm not not options on equities, options on futures.
because I, I found that that was, it was easier to do. And my problem was right in the beginning when I was trading in the pits, you know, I, I wasn't undercapitalized, but I didn't have a ton of money that I put into it. And I randomly chose a broker out of the Wall Street Journal. And he took me for a ride. I was paying 500 bucks per side. Whoa! For, for a turn. Yeah. To trade in the pit. So it, took, it cost me a thousand bucks to place a trade in oh, and out. Oh my goodness. And it was tough for me to make money doing that. <laughs> well, it, co it used to cost a lot of money to make a phone, on a, a, a phone call on a cell phone. Yeah. Yeah, it used to. It used well, to my, my, first, my first broker... Uh, my first broker, he charged me, as I recall, it was about 65 bucks to get me into a trade. And then if we made money on the position, he charged me some percentage coming out. And if we lost money, he just charged me like the same 65 bucks to get out. And, and, and that was... Ex <laughs> that that was just so, and then and then shortly thereafter came the online brokers and the very first one, the first the online brokerage platform I had was called Daytech, and Daytech was bought out by uh, somebody who became Ameritrade. It seems like there was a, yep. another company in between Daytech oh, and was, Ameritrade. There was. I I owned. I I had stuff with them too. It was. Uh, the, the reason I got out of equities, guys, many of you know my story. In fact, it's the reason CFRN was born. People who were trading in uh, riskier, you know, stocks that were under $5, uh, Eagle Tech, uh, Rod, I'm trying to think of his name, who was on 2020 and testified before Congress. Uh, I got in with all those guys, Patrick Byrne, the CEO of... Uh, Overstock.com, a uh, bunch of those guys, and the manipulation in the stock market, and it wasn't just in you know stocks under five dollars because Overstock.com was trading at like thirty-five bucks. But when the club now the conspiracy theories that we say don't really exist, like running your stops and whatnot, okay, this conspiracy this wasn't a conspiracy. This was a fact. Naked short selling was crime then. It's a on the books. It's a crime now. But when the DT when the DTTC and the SEC are colluding with those who are involved, man, well, it may be illegal, but you can't enforce it. So there's radio shows of us calling up, trying to talk to the S, getting hung up on. We were just trying to get to the bottom of it. And so we dedicated, uh, Mark Falk and myself, we dedicated a couple of years of our life to exposing this thing. We did expose it. We did get before Congress. We did get before the SEC. But the problem never went away. And so finally, I don't like to be a quitter, but I finally said I can't fight this. Any, I can continue to fight it, and I can continue to do radio shows, which I did. I continue to do radio shows about the subject for Oh, at least a year after I stopped trading individual equities, but I moved into the electronic futures market because there was no market maker, there was no manipulation, there was no front running. It was a true FIFO, first in, first out. Whether it was Dwayne Reeves trading one E mini contract or Goldman Sachs with an order to buy 10,000, if I got there first, I got serviced first. And so for that reason alone, I fell in love with it, plus the leverage, plus the preferential tax treatment, uh, and the simplicity of you don't have to go home at night and do all this homework and look up all of the, you know, the different, the P.E. ratios of all these different stocks. And you, if you're a technical trader, you just look at the chart. And if there's a trade, you take it. And if there's not, you wait. No homework required. Now, 
when you're new and just learning how to read a chart, yes, it's going to take you some time to sit down and assess that chart. And, and I spend, you know, as long as it takes each time I put on a trade to assess the chart. Some days it's more obvious than others. But if I find myself having to look too hard to find the trade, I pass. I, immediately this warning signal goes off in my head and it's like, whoa, you, you've already thought about this too long. You need to pass because if it's not pretty obvious, you don't want to trade it. So and nobody asked for my story, but there it is. <laughs> Okay, well, that's a good story. My story's on the uh, website, by the way. You can just go out there and read it. <laughs> I published mine. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? I got to run. All right, buddy. So I'll do the after show, guys, except there's nothing really to trade. If you have questions, I'll stick around. I'll be happy to answer them. I'll try to teach you a little bit of something if I can. If you have a question, if not, I'll take me a nice little break, and I'll be back at 5 o'clock Eastern. For today's episode of Releasing Kings with author John Garfield, please go to the website, releasingkings.com. Read some of the recent newsletters he sends out, and you can sign up for the newsletter. It's absolutely free. And the topic, I'll tell you the topic of today. Hang on. Uh, let's see. Release, because he sent me an email and said this will be today's topic. Let me find it. Theme for Friday. Okay. The newsletter from November 19th of 2010. You know what? Let me put this, I'm going to put it in the chat box. This way you guys can go and read it and then you'll be prepared to come and ask some questions. All right, so let me just copy and paste this into No Coach's Corner today. Robin is on a two-week sabbatical. Send to all. Send to all. Okay, guys, you see that? There it is. Yep. That link will take you to John's site. You can read that newsletter. That's going to be the basis of our discussion today. Okay, And he's also got some slides that he's going to share. And it's going to be a great time. Uh, and I really hope you can join us and you can participate, okay? You can ask questions during the discussion. We want this to be interactive, not just two guys, you know, yak yakking at each other. We want you to get involved, ask questions. This is a guy who has dedicated his life to helping Christians bring their faith into the workplace, not just as tr e mini traders, and he is an e mini trader, but he's also an engineer. He's also a preacher. He's also. Um, I guess the term would be evangelist, perhaps, of this movement that he has spearheaded. Uh, and it's about reclaiming all the mountains. There's seven mountains. There's the mountain of finance or business. There's uh, entertainment, Hollywood, music. Do you know how much power movie stars and pop stars have over the minds of our kids? Not to mention half the adults. But our kids, man, if, if, if this pit bull or, or this other woman, Lady Gaga, if, if she does some or he does some outrageous foul thing on American Idol, our kids are going to model that behavior. All right? And so part of what John is trying to convey is that we as believers, we need to, we need to take those mountains back. Entertainment, politics, education. Now... <laughs> Let me give you an example. When uh, my wife and I went to, my son graduated fifth grade this past year, and, they had a, and my daughter graduated kindergarten, and they had a little ceremony. And so we went for this ceremony, and the Glee Club, I don't know how many of you have ever watched that TV show Glee, but I'm going to just come right out and tell you, do not let your children watch that show. Don't. If you don't believe me, you go watch one episode. And then you tell me in good conscience that you want your child to watch that. But anyway, the glee club of this school, which only goes to the eighth grade. So this isn't like these were seniors, you know, who were mature enough for this content. Uh, they performed, I want to be a billionaire. I think that's the name of it. Or 
uh, if anybody in the chat room is by chance familiar with that song, it is, it's, it's disgusting, especially for fifth and sixth graders. Let me just try typing it in. I want to be a billionaire song lyrics. Yeah, that's it. I, I'm not going to say the ugly words, guys, but, and what they had our kids do was they like, they changed the, the naughty word to some, you know, but you knew exactly what they were saying. Um, hang on, let me, this is going to blow you away. And so we wrote to the teachers, we wrote to the principal, we wrote to the school board. And you know what kind of response we got back? We got ignored. That's what we got. I want to be a billionaire so effing bad that you can figure that one out. Buy all of the things I never had. Uh, I want to be on the cover of Forbes magazine smiling next to Oprah and Queen. Now do you see how they've tied this message in with Oprah who is a positive role model for some and the Queen of England who is a positive role model I think for everyone. Uh, next next uh, course, what do you call it, a stanza, I don't know. Oh every time I close my eyes I see my name in shining lights, yeah a different city every night. I swear the world better prepare for when I'm a millionaire. Yeah, I would have a show like Oprah. I would be the host of Everyday Christmas. Give Travi your wish list. I'd probably pull an Angelina and Brad Pitt and adopt a bunch of babies that ain't never had. You can figure that out. Give away a few Mercedes like here lady have this. And last but not least, grant somebody their last wish. Okay, now, now that sounds like a good thing, right? Uh, it's been a couple months that I've been single, so you can call me Travis Claus minus the ho, 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 get it? I'd probably visit where Katrina hid and do a lot more than FEMA did. And it just goes on, and it talks about using drugs and how they want to get high and how now this is a school where right outside there's a big sign that says it's drug free school zone you know zero tolerance so we're giving these kids these incredibly mixed messages you can go on stage perform this horrific little song that's quite popular and has a catchy tune uh, the devil's good with music so they they're encouraged to perform this song all the parents who don't bother I guess to listen to the lyrics go clap 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 but then right outside is this huge sign that says zero tolerance. What, what kind of a message is our, are our kids getting? And this is a public school. And so my wife and I are struggling right now with are we going to homeschool? Are we going to private school? Uh, we, we've tried to change the public school and that's not working. So uh, are there any parents out there who have... Uh, encountered something like this? There's a question. Uh, Dwayne, I would ask, how does your simple compare to latency? For example, stochastic, MACD, etc. are always behind the price move. Uh, that's a great question and I'll, I'll answer that. Let me give you an example. This is, a, in fact, fact, that's a great, can, a great question, Ken. Let me, re let me read it again, just as it was written. Dwayne, I would ask, how does your simple, and I think you mean by simple just the way we trade, compare in latency, for example, to stochastics or MACD where uh, it's always behind the price move, okay? I'm going to have to take the charts back. You don't have a trade going on or anything, do you? Michael? No, he doesn't. He's on the phone. So I'll take the charts. Okay. Let's go back to the hourly chart of the S&P. Okay. Okay. On Wednesday night, 
when I or Wednesday afternoon during the after show, I tweeted out this trade and I explained to everybody that was still listening to the radio show the whole reason for the entire trade, why we were going to go long above 1607, why we were going to go short at 1598, what the obstacles would be to the trade, and what the targets would be. The target up here on the long side would ultimately, well, it would initially be 1415, but there was an obstacle then at 18, and then the next target would be 2425. On the short side, we were going to get triggered in at 1598 because I wanted to clear this zone before I got into the trade. Why? Because I knew this was an obstacle. So if I can, the more obstacles I can get out of my way, the higher probability the trade becomes. And so we triggered. I said, if we trigger at 1598, you're going to want to consider taking some or all profits at 1594. I said that on this candle. No. On this candle. This candle was coming down to the zone. Okay. And this red candle, I put all this information on the chart. So in answer to your question regarding latency, I knew that 1594 was going to be an obstacle to this trade Sunday night. Now let me pause and let that sink in a little bit. Sunday night, I didn't know how this trade was going to lay out yet or that there would even be a trade, except there almost always is a trade. But the market itself told us that at 1694, there's plenty of people willing to buy the S&P 500 E-mini futures. They bought it here at that price. They bought it here at that price. And they bought it here at that price. So if we're selling the market coming down, we have to believe buyers are going to still be willing to pay 1594 until proven otherwise so I understand what you're saying with a uh, indicator that they're always lagging all indicators are lagging price can even be argued as a lagging indicator because current price is a indication of what people thought and did a second ago or a millisecond ago but price, of course, is the closest representation we can get to the truth, okay? Now, that's from a bigger picture. So there's, no, there's zero latency here. I mean, we were way ahead of the curve on this call. But once price got down here, I sent out another tweet that says, come on, guys, really go look at the feed. Really consider taking your profits here because this is how good it was. From 94, they ran it all the way up to 20 and a half. That's 26 points. Okay, that's huge. I mean, 26 times 50 is 26 times 50 dollars per point. That's 1,200 bucks per contract. If you're a 10 contract trader, that's a 12,000 dollar move, and it happened over the course of I don't know 12. 12 hours or so, 13, whatever, whatever it is, if you counted the candles. Now, let's move forward to a smaller time frame, the four tick range. What sort of latency is there there? All right, let's go find this. Let's go to uh, July 1st at 0100 hours on the four tick range. July 1st, 0100 hours. Oh, wrong chart. Oh, that's guys. If you don't know what this chart is, come take the free trial. I'll teach you. It is as awesome as it looks, but that wasn't the chart I was looking for. I wanted this one. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the first July first. There we go, 
is this it? Yeah, July 1st. Now we just need to find 0100 hours. Mm, come on. July 1st. 0100 hours. Okay, on this particular trade, we had bullish divergence. We had a bullish cross. Price pulled away. Here's what happened, though. Price never pulled all the way back to the BBC. This is how you would have drawn your trend line on this trade. Michael, are you there? Let me see if I can pull him back in because I want him to answer something for you. Uh, Michael, are you still there? I see a note now from him that said he had to run, but uh, if he's not here to answer this question, I'm going to take a snapshot of it, and I'll have him answer it for you, and uh, I'll put it on the blog. Yeah, he must be gone. Okay, guys, you see what I'm talking about? We never had the pullback. Now, I know how to trade this, but I don't know if Michael has taught you guys how to trade this in the uh, morning session. Somebody in the chat room, answer me. Has Michael taught you guys how to trade this? Because there is a trade here. Anybody? No? I think he has. I think he calls it the momentum trade, but I'm not sure exactly what criteria he's given you guys. Randall says he doesn't think so. Yes, okay, he's going to jump back in for a minute. He's walking out the door, but he's going to jump back in. Oh, you know what? You got a great point there, Gary. Good job. Hey. What's up? Hey. They had asked me about our indicators and about latency. Did you hear that part of the discussion? I didn't. Okay. He wanted to know, our stuff, is it latent like every other indicator, like the MACDs and the stochastics and all of that? And I had shown how we knew that this would be an obstacle way back on Sunday night. Before the mm -hmm. trade, before we even had the trade, we knew <laughs> that that was an obstacle. So certainly no latency there. But then I rolled over to the four tick chart to July 1st at 0100 hours to see if there was any latency there. Michael, we had a bullish cross, price pulled away, bullish divergence, but we never pulled back. And so what I was asking them is have you taught them how to take these momentum trades when we don't pull all the way back? Why, well, yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. Um, now, Gary just pointed out, Gary just pointed out that, hey, Dwayne, you're right under a zone. So Gary's yep. right, guys. That would negate this trade. Um, if you knew the zone was there. If you At knew the, the zone was there. At the time of that trade, there. nobody knew the zone was there. That's a good point because the traders don't get the zones until 6.15 Eastern. Right. Okay, so now could you just, I know you got to run, but could you explain how that momentum trade would work? Why, sure. In this particular case right here, uh, there's two things going on. One is that the cycle is the wrong color. And two, um, it doesn't actually hit the BBC. So what you would do is you draw a trend line. You draw a trend line down from the top, just like Dwayne has done right there, down the tops, and you look for a close on the other side of that trend line. What that's going to tell you is that the market is continuing in the direction that you anticipated it would continue to go. It's continuing the trend. The next thing to look for is for the green line down on the cycle to turn up and work its, uh, down on the slingshot, sorry, to turn up and work its way all the way up into the cycle. Now, the question about latency, other than the weekly trading zones, all, all indicators, all indicators that display on chart, bar by bar, they have latency. They're all based on some prior action of price. Mm -hmm. So you don't know that until, until it's happened. You, don't, you can't work with that data in the future because you don't know what it's going to be. The weekly trading zones, however, we give out. Dwayne sends those out 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time. 
every Monday morning, and they're good for the entire week. There's no latency on those. Um, the you know when you're looking at things like the MACD and all that, what we teach is how to see things so that you can expect areas. You can expect you know like that that first thing that you had shown where you had said you know we knew ahead of time that this area was going to be important. We knew that that area was a likely area where things might bounce. That's all part of the teaching. That's all part of the that's all part of the process of you know when you become a partner and you go through the whole learning curve. You know we try to teach you all that stuff so you'll you'll learn that. Um, that's we don't have an indicator for that. We just have you know what we what we can try to you know try to pass on to you. Um, as far as the actual indicators go, you know the only one that we have that has no latency at all is is the uh, is the weekly trading zone. The setups that we have, however, because they're based on price action, the indicators that we have tell you the patterns are setting up, and the price action is what actually tells you that the pattern has set up. All right, the price action is drawing those trend lines; it's bouncing off the BBC, all those sort of things. That's the price action part of it. And that's real time. You know, the indicators themselves, they're telling you that something is setting up and the price action is what confirms the setup. There. <laughs> All right. That's exactly what I was looking for. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate you popping in to do that. Right. I know you I know no you problem. gotta run. Does anybody have a last minute, anybody have a question on that? On what he just explained? So would you characterize the method as a momentum or trend trade? Yes, that's yes. A, a term yep. you could use. Both. And there was another question. The weekly trading zones, you're having a hard time getting them to show up and stay on the four tick range. You know, don't let that throw you or do this. If, if on the four tick range, just grab your horizontal line tool and just drop it. Like let's say there was a zone at 1598. Just drop it at 1598. You know you don't have to do all this fancy labeling like I did. Just drop yourself a horizontal line. That way you're, and because those won't go away when you shrink and enlarge the chart. Maybe maybe that'll help you. But but again because at any given time you've only got the zone below you and the zone overhead. And if you're right in the middle of a zone, you've got the one overhead and the one below. So you can just literally put those on a little piece of scratch paper in front of you. So, Okay, Michael, thanks. Have a great weekend. Okay. I'll be All working right. hard. If you need me for anything, I'm here. Okay, thanks. thanks. All right, buddy. I'll try thanks. to be here this afternoon if I can. All right. Oh, okay, that'd be great. All right. All right, we'll see you. Okay, bye. Bye. All right. Any other questions, guys? I saw a lot of your comments about uh, private schooling, homeschooling, Christian schooling. Um, and so we've got to make that decision. Both of my children are advanced educationally, uh, but because of their background and the history uh, prior to them coming to live with us, uh, there are some uh, behavioral issues that still plague them and then of course they've been labeled you know with the ADHD thing uh, I think most kids these or a lot of kids these days get labeled with that um, so we deal with those issues but I want them to have the very best education and um, my son took uh, saxophone this year in public school and wow he's kind of a natural you know he just He's really doing quite well. And my daughter, uh, that's where I have the most behavioral issues. Uh, she can hear a praise and worship song at church one time, come home, and over Sunday dinner, she can sing it. It's just amazing. Uh, and, then, and then you're like, how can someone, how does someone this gifted have such an struggle with this behavioral issue and a lot of it goes back to things that happened uh, you know when she was still in the womb you know so with the grace of God we're overcoming all of that
And so all of you that I know that send your comments, your prayers our way, we, we really do appreciate that. Thank you so much. And, and there's some of you who have taken a very active role in their lives, and uh, I thank you for that. You know who you are. Um, okay, if, I, if I've missed a question, guys, please type it into the box. Copy and paste it because the scroll is just full. Uh, I'll hang out another two, three minutes to give you a chance to repost. Now, if you're not on a free trial, maybe you're just on the open house, and you'd like to take the free trial, if you've already taken it before and the system won't let you in, uh, send an email to support at CFRN.net and to say, hey, I took it before, I'd like again, here's my story, here's what happened, and I'll, send you, I'll, I'll set the machine up so it lets you back in for a second shot, okay? Uh, you can't become a serial free trial taker, though. All right, just you know, honor that, honor the honor system. Okay. Now, Friday afternoons are a great time to sign up for the free trial because today won't count against your five days, nor will Saturday, nor will Sunday. The meter doesn't start running until Monday morning, when the live trading room opens. But you get all of today, tomorrow, and Sunday to familiarize yourself with the charts, the indicators, the platform, ask questions, make sure you've got everything up and running so that when the live trading room opens Monday morning, you've got your platform just ready to go. Now, here's what I would prefer that you do on Monday. Even though you've got your platform up and running and everything's working, I'd prefer that you focus on Michael and what he's doing during those two hours from 9.30 to 11.30. In other words, don't try to shadow his every trade the first day because if you do, it'll be a little overwhelming. You might get frustrated. You might even get discouraged trying to keep up. It's better that you watch him and take notes, okay? Because when the live trading room ends at 11.30, you'll have the entire rest of the trading day to go in and practice on any market that you want. And then once uh, the day session closes, Globex will reopen. You can pick right up where you left off, practicing on the Asian uh, session. And then on the European session, if you're a night owl, and then you're right back to the Globex uh, or the Wall Street Open on Tuesday morning. Okay, now don't burn yourself out, but I really want you to get as much out of your five days as you can. Because even if you don't become a partner, if at the end of the five days you go, hey, thanks guys, I learned a lot, but I don't think this is for me okay great come hang out with us on the radio I want you to at least take away some valuable tips and some facts and some concepts and ideas about trading that maybe you didn't have before so I want it to be a beneficial week now in order for that to happen you really do have to download the platform roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty and you might be thinking man the last thing in the world I want to do is learn another platform you know what I don't blame you I was talking to one of the guys the other day by phone who's getting ready to purchase one of our trading computers. Which, by the way, we do sell trading computers. If you Google e-mini trading computer, it comes right to the top. I was talking to him about, <clears throat> well, you know what, let me... Let me save that discussion because if I if I go down that alley, it's gonna it's gonna take us longer than I really have time for right now. But get the platform downloaded, get it installed, start taking trades so that you can ask good questions. Well, I'll go ahead. Let me just touch touch on this really lightly. We all have heard about major life events, okay? Uh, a death 
of, a, of someone close to you is like the major life event. Throws your whole world out of whack. Second is a divorce. Okay. Third, and I added this one, changing trading platforms. When I went from Realtek to TradeStation, my world li literally fell apart. And this was way back in 2006. I just, I thought my career was over. I, it was too different. I couldn't go on from Realtek to TradeStation. <laughs> Not only did it, did it go on, I, I went on to become a certified TradeStation developer. So there, you know, if we apply ourselves, we can overcome uh, most any obstacle. Uh, how does the scripture go with, uh, I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me? Yeah, that applies to trading too and learning new platforms. The DT Pro platform is quite intuitive and you don't have to learn every bell, whistle and function to get through the free trial. But if you're going to be able to ask the right questions, okay, to gather enough information to truly make a decision whether or not this is right for you, you need to be using the platform. You might say, yeah, but I don't want to change brokers. Okay, I understand. We only code for the DT Pro platform for a number of reasons. One, our indicators caters are secure. There's very much security issues in the world of futures trading and all types of trading. When people develop systems and methodologies, you know, a lot of people in the world got nothing better to do than to try to hack your stuff. Instead of going and just working and creating their own stuff or just learning how to trade, you know, it makes them feel very clever if they can take something that doesn't belong to them. So we have a special added layer of security with DT Pro, but that's just a small part of the equation. What we really have is Burton Leslie, two dedicated professionals who are not just licensed brokers for many years. Uh, Leslie even used to be broker for one, Michael Cavalier, one of the original turtle traders from the 80s. You may have heard of them. They've seen a lot in their day and time. But they're not just, it doesn't just stop there with them being great brokers. They're great traders. They trade and make money in the markets. Or, you know, I'm not saying they make money every day, but you know what I mean. Make money, lose money, whatever. They're in the trenches putting on and taking off trades every single day. So when you call and ask them a question, they're not referring to some, you know, manual that was handed out to them by the people in HR. They're speaking to you from their own life and from their own experience. And you'll know it instantly in the quality of the answer that you get. Whoa, this person. And now, same token or other side of the coin, you're not going to pull the wool over their eyes. You're not going to call them up and go, oh, yeah, well, I was doing this, this, and they're going to go, well, okay. <laughs> but they know, see? They know people, they know traders, and quite frankly, as the broker, they can see what you did. They might not fully understand your motivation, but they can see what you did. Now, that's good because it holds you to a level of accountability. Remember, I said early on in the show today, one of the problems that people that are starting their own trading business have to wrestle with is that they're no longer accountable to anyone except themselves. Well, knowing that there's a professional trained trader watching what you do, I don't mean they're hawking every move you make, but with the click of a couple buttons, they can see everything you've done. And if you call and ask them, they will watch you live in real time. Hey, could you watch me trade for the next hour? Because I just something I miss, and they will. They'll work very hard to earn your business. They'll work even harder to keep your business. But when you're on the free trial and you're trying to get this platform going and these indicators going, man, they will be there for you. You may never become a client. You may never spend a dime with them. But they're going to give you the same level of support that they do give their paying clients. Why? Because that's just the caliber of people they are. And that's why we chose to be loyal to Daniel's Trading and DT Pro. 
rarely a week goes by that we don't get solicited by some IB, some clearing house, somebody somewhere that wants us to come and make our system, our methodology, and our indicators available on their platform. And we always thank them very politely for having an interest in us, but then I tell them the truth, everything I just told you, except I try to keep it short, like an elevator pitch, why we can't do that. But thanks again for your interest, right? So once you get to know them, once you have your back up against the wall a couple times, and they're there for you to help you, you'll nod your head and go, yeah, Dwayne was right. These guys are different. See, every time you call, you're going to actually talk to one of them. Not somebody in a phone room somewhere, you know. You're going to talk to Bert or Leslie, and that's important. And maybe you're brand new to trading and you don't even understand why that's important. Over time, you will, okay? All right, I'm going to take one last look here at the chat box. Knew most of those guys, not bragging, but just saying, wow, need to hear you say that. Hey, Jer hey Jerry, you and I are supposed to be doing a show, man. When are we going to, we got to quit talking about it and just do it. Uh, oh, I got a message here. Hang on. Here you go. Let uh, I, I take it you're listening, Charlie. I'm going to put a link in here for you. Guys, this is someone who has asked for a second chance. Okay, Charlie, if you'll, if you'll follow that link I just put in the chat box for you, that's going to take care of you, okay? And then once you get the link I'm going to send you, be sure and call uh, Bert. He's in the office today. I think Leslie took the day off. But call Bert, and, and he'll help you anything you need. All right? Uh, Gary. Gary says, love the Dow zones, but with the Dow two points wide, how about the Dow being 20 ticks wide? Mm, I'm not sure. Gary, rephrase that. Sometimes it just does, it doesn't click for me. It's not your fault. I mean the ES two points. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because I make, oh no. Wait a minute. Well, a Dow trade, we a Dow, the equivalent in the Dow, 20 points is equal to two points in the S&P. Now, this might be let me bring up the Dow chart. We, we had it up the other day. I've still got it running. Okay. Mm, let me get rid of all these drawing objects. These zones are five points wide from 70 to 75. If they were going to be exactly equal to the S&P, they should be 10 points wide because 10 points in the Dow equals one point in the S&P. So actually this is the equivalent of a half a point in the ES. But you are correct that a 20 point move in the Dow is the same as a two point move in the S&P. Now we can see what happened over the week. Here's Sunday night Globex. I didn't tweet, okay, uh, the Dow, but look what happened, okay? That thing I showed you earlier. Mm, let's see if I can bring it up. really quick. Come on. Because this is a beautiful example of my little 
elevator pitch. Now, you guys do know that was a play on words where I said I had reduced my elevator pitch from 30 seconds to just three lines, right? Play on words. I'm sure you got it. Because this audience tends to be above average uh, in both stature and intelligence. Okay. The perfect elevator pitch. Here it comes. Oh boy, I guess I need to click see more. Mm. All right, let me just move this out of the way while it takes its sweet time loading. What I wanted you to see was this. Price moved up. There we go. Price moved up off the zone. Price pulled back to the zone. And then price moved north. Okay. Remember that was my little elevator pitch picture. Price moved up. Price pulled back to the zone, and price did that, okay? And then it did it again. It went from there to there. So there. Two ends. Okay? Now this, I can't flip this image upside down, but if we flipped this image upside down, we would want the zone to be on top. Okay? Okay, here's an example. Price did that. Price did that. And then price did that. Down. Back to test. Down. That is this thing. Now remember on this one, the weekly trading zone is below. But when we flip it over, then the weekly trading zone is on top. Okay. Now you see from here, once we get this test, okay, once we get this test, what we want to do look left and find your lowest swing low. Okay, that's right there. Okay, let's draw a line across here. Is that straight? Mm. No. There, I had it. Oh, come on. I think that's straight. Okay. Uh, no, it's not, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay, so remember price came down, price came back, tested the zone for, well, we'll just call it one, two, three hours right here. These are hourly candles. Now, I need to see price break below that low. So I got to drag this down a little bit. Okay. So let's say for argument's sake that we're going to trigger in at 14844. Four. Okay. Where's the first place that I have an obstacle to this trade? Where's my now remember price came down, price pulled back, the zone held as resistance, and price started to go in the direction that I wanted it to go in order to give me a short trade. And that is simply this turned upside down with the zone above it and not below it. Okay? So, the first obstacle I'm going to have to my trade, 
that's going to be the low of this candle right here. And that price is basically 14811. And up here, this is 14844. All right. So I know I can do this without a calculator, but 44. Everybody with me? That's 14844 down to 14811. So 44 minus 11 equals 33. Okay? So I've got my, my pattern. Okay? Remember, it's flipped upside down and the weekly zone's on the top, not the bottom. I'm going to, when I break the low right here, the swing low of this candle, that's going to trigger me in. I'm only looking for two points as part of my business plan, my trading plan. Your plan may be different, okay? But if you're following it the way we teach, at least to get started, you know, maybe you want to get that nailed and then you're going to do something different, okay? So two points in the S&P is equivalent, as Gary just pointed out, to 20 points in the Dow. Two points in the S&P equals 20 points in the Dow. The S&P pays $50 a point. The Dow pays $5 a point. So let's get us a little line going on here. And let's change the color of that line so it stands out. Let's make it green. How about that? Okay, so if we're going to get triggered in at 44 and we're looking for 20 points, then that means our target is going to be 24. So let's go find 24. Okay, is that 24? Yeah. Okay, so is everybody with me so far? I'm going to stop right here for a moment. I'm going to slow down and leave anybody. Oh, okay, Gary. No, the, the S&P zones, they're one point apart. Like, uh, where's my sheet from this week? Uh, on the ES, like 1601 slash 1602. So there's like one point in between. On the Dow, there's five points in between. But if I were going to make them totally equal, there should actually be 10 points. But anyway, let me not stray too far, because this is a great point, guys. If you, if you catch this little tidbit here, and I actually have the video running today, so this is good. So we're recording the video on this. Okay, everybody's with me. Okay. You know what? <clears throat> Let me do this. Oh, I forgot it's going to take forever. Isn't it? All right, you just got to use your imagination. And with your ma I really need you to see this turned upside down. It's not that hard. You can do it. All right, well, here comes my charts. Hang on. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right. Charts. Let's scroll down to the letter N. Oh, you know what? It's not in charts. It's in pictures. Scroll down to the letter N. N. 
There it is. Okay. All right, that's going to take a while too. Price came down, price pulled back. We all know where we get triggered, right? 44. Does everybody understand that's why we get into the trade? And we know that's why we get into the trade. <laughs> oh, man. What did I want to do? I wanted to turn this. Oh, but I need to flip it. I went on, I did all that, and I can't even get it to do what I want it to do. You know what I want it to do. I want a mirrored image, really. Is that an option? All right, I'm done. I'm not going to mess with that anymore. I'm sorry. I put you guys through all that needlessly. It's not even germane to my point. Now if I can just make it go away. Oh dear. <laughs> there it goes. So we get triggered in at 44. We're looking for 20 points. That's this green line. The obstacle, obstacle to our trade is all the way down here at 14.11. This is a trade that has no obstacles. Remember I said that almost every trade is going to have at least one obstacle in its path. Between the entry and the target. There's going to be some little obstacle that the market itself has placed in its path. But over the course of any given day, if you watch carefully the markets that you're following, you'll find these little golden nuggets, these little gems where you have no obstacle in your path. Now, Am I going to say that that makes it like taking candy from a baby? Nope. Does that make it foolproof? Nope. Idiot proof? Nope. Easy? Nope. Simple? Yeah. But the term I really want you to latch on to here is high probability. Why is it high probability? All right, let's go back to some physics. An, uh, and I don't know physics, so you might have to help me. An object set in motion will remain in motion until a force... Somebody help me here. I only went to the 12th grade. I got there by the time I was 16, but that's as far as I went. I'm not a college guy. Can somebody help me with that? Until it, thank you, Rick. Until it is met by an equal and opposite force. Exactly. Okay. An object once set in motion will remain in motion until it is met by an equal and opposite force. There is nothing here for it to run into until it gets to here. Okay. Now, does, does this mean, oh, well, so there's no way you can lose here? No, there's no such thing as that. At any given time, one of those traders or a group of those traders sitting at that table can put on an order that starts some kind of chain reaction, and this thing could do whatever it might do. But let me rephrase that. For me, Dwayne Reeves, is this the highest probability trade setup that I know of. I'm going to type in my answer. 
Yes. When I use a 48 size font, a 48 point font, <laughs> I'm really serious. Okay. Now this is that same pattern that we had over here. Okay. And over here. Right. And here it is here. Okay. Now this is on an hourly chart. Could this work on a five minute chart? Or a one minute chart? Or daily chart? Or a tick chart? Or a range chart? Or a volume chart? The answer is yes. Absolutely yes. Not only can it, but it does. Because the markets are fractal in nature. Whatever happens on one time frame also happens on other time frames. I didn't create that. <laughs> It's just the way it is. That's the truth. Okay? Price made its move. Price pulled back. Now, you had to have patience. You had to sit here for three hours until this thing started to move. How did you get triggered in? You had to take out the low of this candle. Because, why? Why do I have to take out the low of that candle? Because right here, Think about this candle. At one point in the life of this candle, it had a red body. It looked for all the world like it was going to take the market lower. But by the time the candle closed, it was obvious who was still in control of the ball, the buyers. Because we close with an up close, we close higher than we opened, hence a green body on the candle. Okay. Now if we break the low of that candle, that tells us something very important. The buyers no longer have the ball. The sellers, the bears, the bears have the ball now. And they're going to attempt to take it down field. And the only thing that can stop them are the bulls. The only thing they can stop the bears are the bulls. And where are the bulls? The bulls are here. The bulls are also here. And they're also here. You say, wow, man, <laughs> that's a lot of resistance. That's a lot of obstacles. I don't know if I want to be in that trade. Remember, from here to here, we have no obstacles. And we have 22 points of opportunity. And what's our daily goal? No, wait, I'm sorry. From there at 44 down to 11. No, now, no down here is 11. What we have is we have 33 points of opportunity from 44 down to 11. So before we run into any known trouble, 33 points. But our 20 points is right there. I want you to think about this. I want you to ponder this. What if, what just, what if every trade you took from this day forward met this criteria? What if you only took trades that had no obstacles in your path for two points on the S&P or at least 20 points on the Dow. Does that mean you would win every trade or have a 
profitable outcome on every trade? No. Just as big as I wrote yes up here, I would write no. It does not mean that. It does mean that if you're only trading these incredibly high profitability setups, your results and your P&L are going to drastically change. You're going to astonish yourself. Now, have I made it look pretty simple? I have. Is it that simple? It is. Do you need some experience? Do you need some training? Do you need some coaching? Do you need some mentoring? Do you need some hand-holding and the occasional shoulder to cry on? I see you do. Okay. Do we offer that? We do. Do we charge real money for it? We do. Because our time is valuable. I'm not ashamed of that, you know. I had a well. I've had variations of this many times, but I had a guy one day. He sent me an email. He says, "You know, I really want to learn how to trade the S&P 500 E-mini futures, and 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 I'm willing, <laughs> I'm willing to let you teach me how to be a successful trader. If you guarantee me every penny I spend with you is going to your orphanage." I wrote him back and I said, sir, I'm not even interested in having you as a partner. And he wrote me back all offended. He's like, well, what do you mean? I go, well, number one, you don't tell me what to do with my money. The fact that my wife and I chose to build an orphanage and that we are believe that's the ministry God called us into and because that's what we do with a lot of our income our disposable income instead of Dwayne driving a red Ferrari Dwayne's driving a 12 year old pickup truck that overheated again yesterday so I gotta go back to the mechanic but he didn't think I had electricity bills to pay or children to school or you know tires to buy or any of the normal things that a person would do in life now why am I bringing this up because I don't ever want anybody to misunderstand and think that every dime you spend with CFRN goes to the or it doesn't say that anywhere on our website. It does say that that's the ministry God called my wife and I to, along with several others. We had a home for battered women and abused children. We have a mission down in the barrio in Puerto Penasco, uh, Mexico, also known as Rocky Point. We're involved in a work in Kenya where we grew. Uh, 150 acres of corn uh, last year and we lost 70 percent of it to the worst flood in a hundred years eh, life goes on but you understand that th the thinking of someone who's like oh okay so you're gonna teach me a way that I can make you know untold wealth whatever uh, but I want to control how you spend the money I give you <laughs> needless to say that person did not become a partner, not because they didn't want to become a partner. I just didn't think it was a healthy relationship. I wasn't trying to punish them in any way. I just wanted to make sure they understood me and where I was coming from. You know, I say this a lot, but it's the truth, and I'll say it again. You may not always like what I tell you, but I'll always tell you the truth. The truth is I understand it. Okay? And if that ever changes, if I ever receive some enlightenment in a specific area, then I'll come clean. I'll go, hey, <laughs> I learned a lesson and let me share it with you. Okay? Because someday I'm going to have to answer to everything I ever said, everything I ever did. We all are. It's called judgment. Okay? We started out today with judge not, least ye also be judged. We all need to remind ourselves of that constantly and consistently. Okay? But I don't want to preach. I just want to go back and explain this one more time. I want you to consider, if you become a partner, if you download this platform, if you go through the free trial, if you truly believe with all of your heart that becoming a CFRM partner is the right thing for you at this stage in your journey, 
to become a full-time trader, a trader who trades for a living, okay, and then I want you to know that Michael and I are here for you. We will commit the next 90 days of our life to helping you become a trader. We can't make you a trader. Just like baseball, we can teach you how to play baseball, but we can't make you a baseball player. Nobody can. Think about that. Okay? Would we like to have as a partner? Absolutely. We want to grow our community. We want it. Let me show you if I can get my web browser to cooperate which would be an interesting concept, the way this has gone so far. Let's see here. CFRN. And some of you don't even know this, so let me just show it to you. Oh, there it goes again. Note to self. Reboot daily, perhaps, Dwayne. I'm going to the equity partner page. If you're a new partner, you might not even be aware of the equity partner status. Let me show you what it is. This is really important to us. This is what drives us. I mean, is part of it. Do, do, we, do we work so many hours and do the teaching and the training and the whatnot because there's income generated? Yes. We believe that a smart businessman should always have a minimum of two income streams. You know, the really smart guys like Warren and uh, the other fellow, uh, the apprentice guy, Donald, they'll all tell you that a smart businessman will have multiple income streams. So along with trading, you know, running the CFRN website and radio station, that is, that's, it's a labor of love. It's also an income stream. I make no no secret of that, okay? And if I can just get this page to load, I'd really like to show it to you before I go. I don't see any other questions. And so as soon as I show you this, I really am going to go. Because I want to take a nice rest and I want to read that uh, newsletter from John Garfield so that I'll be well prepared for releasing King's the podcast episode 2 coming up today at 5 p.m. Eastern and it will be in this room you don't need to close this room okay alright so I'm gonna give that thing one more minute to try to load <laughs> it may or may not happen it says it's trying price got triggered in here, we know our entry to the tick. We get 20 points, our daily goal, before we run into an obstacle to the trade. If you've never been to this page, you can. You can go there if you want. With traders around the globe from from Morsky, Poland to Houston, Texas, we've become an international e-mini trading academy focused on equipping partners with cutting-edge proprietary technology and world-class technical analysis. As we grow, it is important that we never lose sight of our original goals to nurture and train emerging e-mini traders who themselves are equally dedicated to making the world a better place. Our common bond the faith we share, our daily mantra, innovation and creativity, our way of life, discipline and humility. It is in this spirit that we have created the Partners Tuition Reimbursement Program. As a certified CFN partner, you automatically qualify, nothing to purchase, no fee to pay. As a partner, you have access to technology that changes lives. As we continue to grow, our goal is to be involved with traders 
who are as passionate about their faith as they are about their work. And that's really the heart of releasing kings, is that your work, your faith, your mission can become one and the same. They don't have to be separate entities. We want you to become more than a student, more than an alumni. We want you to become a part of the company. We want you to have a vested interest in CFRN. We begin by returning every tuition dollar paid, but that's just the beginning. As an equity partner, you become an ambassador to the nations, the voice of who we are as e-mini traders and believers. Now, I'll be honest with you. John, who I just spoke about, he received an early morning phone call from one of our partners in Switzerland who had been following the Releasing Kings ministry and was very much a part of that. And he says, hey, I've come across something that I think is very good and I think you might be interested and you might want to take a look at it. Now, there's time differences, so our partner in Switzerland hadn't really thought about the fact that in Seattle it was uh, 3 in the morning. So, but the call came in and John says, well, okay, I'll take a look at it. Well, he took a look. He took a free trial. He chose to become a partner. Okay. A CFRN equity partner is a new kind of missionary. Not defined by geography, but marked by the willingness to apply the parable of the Good Samaritan. And go and do likewise. Being a Christian trader means being intentional with your time, your money, and your passions. Christianity should be a verb, not a noun. It's a movement that requires us to live out our faith, not just talk about it. As you share the good news of CFRN, your efforts will not go unrecognized or unrewarded. As an equity partner, you receive a $500 reimbursement for each new trader you refer who becomes a CFRN partner. Once your entire tuition has been refunded via your referrals, you can stop right there. Or you can embark on a career path that allows you to both trade and share the good news of CFRN. A dual income stream is always an intelligent business strategy. CFRN will compensate equity partners $500 for each and every CFRN partner you bring on board. Future plans include additional compensation packages, performance-based bonuses, corporate retreats, and benefit packages ranging from health care to 401ks. At CFRN, we believe every partner has something important to say and that every partner is integral to our success. As a CFRN equity partner, you are our success. You are the future. Today marks the dawn of a new era. You could very well be standing in someone's garage circa 1974. The time has come to put our money where our hearts are. Together we will grow, and I mean that, together, not just me and Michael. No, me, Michael, and every one of you. Together we will grow the finest trading company the world has ever known. If you have any questions, you can email me or you can call me. Okay. If you're a partner and you weren't aware of this because you're new and you haven't taken advantage of it and you want to get started, again, you don't have to pay any additional fees. You don't have to go anywhere and sign up. Just tell your friends, hey, I found something that's working pretty good for me and you can take a five-day free trial just like I did and see if it's for you. So you don't ever have to try to twist anybody's arm or, or pressure somebody into buying a bunch of products and putting them in their garage. It's not like that at all. The same courtesy that was extended to you, you extend to others. Hey, 
I'm trading now. I'm learning to trade for a living. It's, I think, you know, if come take a look. See if it's for you. It might be. It might not be. So, in fact, we had one, we had one person who couldn't afford to become a partner, and I think they finally recommended enough people who became partners that they were able to pay for their own partnership. Uh, it's a very unique and rare situation, and we didn't set out to do that. It just kind of we just realized that it had happened, and so we did the right thing. We'll always try to do the right thing, as long as we recognize it as the right thing. Okay, let me see. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Okay, I guess we've covered all the questions. Um, something I did want to tell you. Hmm. I hope you'll come back at 5 Eastern. This isn't it, but I hope you'll come back at 5 Eastern. I put in the chat box earlier the link to get into uh, or to read John's newsletter, which will be the basis of today's discussion. And I will put that in again. If you'll hold on one second, I've got it right here. <clears throat> Okay, I'm putting it in the chat room right now. Let me make a little snapshot of this. Here's what would be a good homework lesson for you over the weekend. Go through your charts, and it can be, again, any time frame. It can be one minute, five minute, hourly, 30 minutes, daily, weekly, doesn't matter. Volume chart, 10,000 contract, range chart, tick chart. Go through and see how many of these setups that you can find that would allow you to take two points in the ES or 20 points in the Dow, the YM, or whatever it takes to make $100 per contract in the other markets. Like soybeans, it's 1250 so that's just like the uh, S&P. It's 1250 a tick. There's four ticks to a point. So two pennies in soybeans is the same as two points in the S&P. Uh, gold and crude, they pay $10 a tick. So you need 10 ticks okay, to make 100 bucks in gold and crude. Uh, okay, capture screenshot. Let's do it. Does anybody have any question on this? Go through some charts, the markets that you want to trade, and see how many of these you can find, okay? And then maybe send me, I don't know, you can send me screenshots, or you can just create like a little, uh, a little journal page where you go, hey, I found one here and here and here and here. And then I'm going to push it back over to you and say, okay, What if you only traded those setups? What if you looked? What if you were so patient? Now, I know, now, granted, every day we come in, we try to get our two points as quick as we can. But that's because we have a two-hour window, and we're trying to show the trade setup itself as many times as we can to as many people in as many different markets over the course of those two hours. But what if you were patient and said, I'm just going to wait for this. I'm going to wait for trades that allow me to have no obstacle. Now I didn't say no risk.
because every trade has risk. So you're always going to have to equate for that. But I'm only going to take the trades where I have no obstacles before I get to my goal. Now it may be in some of the markets that you have to have one, maybe even two obstacles. Okay? Or do you? <laughs> I'm going to leave you with that little teaser. Or do you? Maybe it depends on how much patience you have. And maybe it depends on if you're willing to wait, how high of a probability does that become percentage-wise? It's a great homework assignment, okay? And I'd love to see your results. Gold, crude, soybeans, Russell, S&P, whatever. I would because number one, it would just warm my heart to know that you're out there actually participating in your own success as an e-mini futures trader. Okay, not just waiting for somebody to hand it to you or give it to you, because it's going to be a it's going to be a hard road that way. But the second you start becoming actively involved and taking responsibility. Everything changes. Everything changes. So I want that for you, man. I do. I really do. All right. I'm checking out. No, Ken, get out. <laughs> Ken goes, I wasn't at the screen when you showed that example. Well, guess what, Ken? I recorded it both audio and video. Kevin's, Kevin also says, sorry, but I missed the first part of the rules to ID the setup for homework. Okay, I'll go through it again real quick, guys. I'll be happy to. All right. Oh, how do I want to do this? And how did I, where did that line even come from? Oh, all right, now I remember. I can't even remember my own setup. I'm going to keep my green line because it took me a long time to get that. I'm going to get rid of everything else, and I'm going to go through it start to finish. Okay, and we'll even move those over. All right, <clears throat> here's what we were doing. We were working with... The picture I posted last night about my elevator pitch, oh, I can't do it from there because I'm in the midst of a project. Come on. All right, I'll move it out of the way. <clears throat> All right. Price did this. You see me do that a million times. Well, maybe not a million. And then price did this. And then price did this. Okay. It's that same pattern over and over again and again. No, it's a short setup. Is this the same thing to the left around 1500? Mm, around 1500. It is, yes. Well, no. Well, yeah. It, yeah, it is. It is. And, and we'll walk through that. Let's do the short side real quick and then we'll, I'll, I'll walk through that long one. I'll, do, I'll just do it really quick. This page over here, it may or may not load <clears throat> at this point. So, price moved down. It pulled back to the zone. The zone proved itself to be good resistance. Remember, it was support. It was support here. It was support here. But we broke through it, and it became resistance. Okay? And this page over here is 
finally loading. All right. There it is. <laughs> oh boy, that was brutal. This little N right here, that's all I was after. That little pattern right there. I don't know why I can't just load. Anyway, I'm done with it. Forget about it. Price broke down. Price pulled back. The zone served as resistance. Price continued on. It's that same pattern I show you guys over and over day after day. And, and now it's... <laughs> right there, that guy. Except it's turned upside down because we're in a short trade. This is for the long trade. Weekly trading zone is here. When you flip it over for the short trade, the weekly trading zone's up above. All right, I'm done with that. Okay, so once price pulls back, and for three hours we find out that this is indeed good resistance, how do we know when to get into the trade? Okay, we look left and we see this swing low right here. So we're going to come over here, we're going to take the line, we're going to draw it right across the bottom of that swing low. Got to get a straight line. Painstaking work. There we go. Did we get it finally? Yeah. Okay, but just the bottom of that's not enough. We need to get below it. So we're going to come down to 44. In fact, let me open this up a little bit. And like that. Yeah, oh, that's much better. Okay, so price came down, price pulled back. Now, once it's pulled back, because remember, we don't know that all this has happened over here yet, okay? But we know that right there, that's our trigger. But we can't be right at it. We've got to get a couple, because price might bounce off of that. We need price to actually make a move through it. So we set this line up here at 14, 844. Okay. The first obstacle to this trade, if we're going to take a short trade, and we're going to trigger in, once we break the low here, if we're going to trigger in, what's the obstacle to this trade on the downside? Well, the obstacle to the trade is the low of this candle. The reason is because buyers came in at that price. Okay. At one point in time this was a red candle. Okay. This whole this down here was a body and it was red. But before the hour finished it completely changed. It became a green candle. Okay. Bullish. But at one point in the life of this candle, it was a red-bodied, angry, I'm going down candle. So we know that buyers are willing to pay this price. So if price gets down here, it's a high probability that buyers are going to step in and they're going to be willing to buy this area. Okay, we accept that. Now that price is 14.15, but we need to shave a little off of that. Okay. Let's go up to 1420. Okay. Now this is 44 where we're getting triggered in. So to get 20 points, if we're going to trigger in at 44, and we need 20 points, that's going to be 24. Actually, that used to be there. Okay, so we know that buyers may come in here to run price back up. But we trigger in here once we break this low. Now, between here 
and here, what do we have? Nothing. There's nothing to get in the way of this trade. So if we enter at 44, there's 33 points down to, what did I have this thing at before, 11? Yeah, right there. Okay, yeah, right there, right at the bottom, 11. So from the entry to the obstacle, is 33 points, but we're only looking for 20. From here to the green line is 20 points, okay? This is a high probability, this is the highest probability setup that I have. Price broke through a zone, price pulled back. Remember, those are the three lines of my elevator pitch. Price pull down, price pull back, and price starts to move in the direction I need it to move in to have a short trade. Where do I get in? On the break of the low of this candle. And once I get triggered in, right here gives me 20 points. I'm done for the day. This is equivalent to 2 points in the S&P, 20 points in the Dow. There's still another 13 points left to go before we even get to resistance. So could I trail a stop? Could I potentially take more than 20? Yeah, could. So the challenge for the homework assignment was to go through charts over the weekend and see how many of these trade setups you can find where you have no obstacle. You're able to meet your daily goal with no obstacles or at the most one obstacle. Because as an individual trader, you have time and you have to develop patience, you can wait until this scenario sets up for you. You don't have to rush into anything. Now, I know some people have to go to the day job and they wake up and they trade pre-market and they want to get their points you know, before going to work. And I understand that, okay? But there are those of you who have more time than you have money at least at the moment. And so wouldn't it be in your best interest to find those trades that have no obstacles in their path? I'm able to get in, get my daily goal before I run into potential resistance. Answers, yes. Now, we also drew the other obstacles on. There's another obstacle here. And there's another obstacle here. These don't, re they're not really that important to us because remember, we already got our daily goal of 20 points way up here before we hit any of these obstacles. But let's go to the right and let's see what finally happened. Price finally got really close to the weekly trading zone. We had a swing low of 751. We got within call it 10 points of the zone, which is equivalent to one point in the S&P. So right here, this is the equivalent of price getting down to within one point of the zone. And as I teach you, zones are an area, okay? It's not an exact spot on the chart, it's an area. So it got down to the area, it took out that obstacle and that obstacle and that obstacle. But it couldn't, it couldn't take out the zone in this case. And that's where it turned around Buyers had the ball. The bulls were running the ball up the court. Ran into trouble here at the zone. And right here, this line shows you where the bears took control of the ball and ran it downfield. This is as far as they could get it. They got it really close to the end zone, but they couldn't quite get there. The Bulls took the ball back and ran it. So I'm done. That's my encouragement to you. Go through the charts. Pick any market. Pick any time frame. Use volume charts, tick charts. Find the chart that just sings to you that makes beautiful music and you go, wow, 
is that really possible? I can actually take trades that have no obstacles? Now, that doesn't mean every trade you're going to go to the bank and cash a check. That doesn't exist. They're always going to be trades that get stopped out. That's part of trading. And those who get caught up in that endless search for just, if I can just find one more thing, one more confirming indicator, one more secret time frame, then I'll never again have to know the pain of being stopped out. Never going to happen. I, scientifically, I can prove to you why that is never going to happen. Okay? And we talked about it a lot. So those of you that missed it, the second go through, I, I kind of breezed through it. But go back and um, I'll try to get the video uh, of this radio broadcast uploaded today or at least over the weekend. You can go and watch it again, watch it in slow-mo. Now there was a question, does this same scenario apply over here? Yes, it does. Except on this one, you're going to have some obstacles in your path. Okay. Let me just back up to, let's go back to here. Let me get rid of these for a moment so it doesn't confuse the issue. Okay, this is just what Price did. Price broke above the zone, pulled back to the zone, found support, and ultimately went to the zone. When you hear us say zone to zone, back to the zone, that's what we're talking about. And these moves were worth 14875 to f this is a 125 point move. 125 points up, 125 points back down. Zone to zone to zone. 125 up, 125 down. Okay. Price breaks Come on. Mm, price breaks up. Price pulls back. Price continues the move. Where's the entry? Okay. Because we got to wait for this, and then we got to wait for this. Now, because this one didn't pull all the way back to the zone, you could say, well, that's a little tricky. Okay. I don't disagree. What if we got in here? get that out of the way <laughs> oh, boy. I spent so much time fiddling with this Okay, so price pulled up. Price pulled up. Actually, you know, we should be looking to get in over here. But, well, what if we did? What if we got in there? Price went up. Price pulled back. Now, but this is the pullback. We really got to wait for this candle. So as we come up through here, the swing high of this candle is 909. So I'm going to make this 911. All right. You follow me? Up, pull back. Now we're running. Okay, we got to break the high of this to get triggered in. Okay, because we know there's resistance there because it pushed it down. All right. So from here, to here there's nothing in the way
Let me open this up a little bit. And I'm going to get that out of the way. Okay. Price ran up. Price ran up. Price pulled back. Now the continuation of the move. This line is at 14,911. This line is at 14,925. How much room is that? Fourteen from here to here, it's fourteen points with no resistance. Okay, you're going well, yeah, but I need to get twenty points. Now, remember, you're able. You're able to think about this as this candle is growing. You're able to stratify and figure this out because you already know where the high of this candle is. You already know where the high of this candle is. So while price is down here fiddling around and trying to get its rally together and it's starting to climb, okay, you establish 11 is going to be your entry and the swing high over here was... 25, okay, so you want to get out before 25, all right, you want to be out at least, you know, 24, okay, so we need to, we need to peel that back, if the swing high here is 25, and the swing high of this, well, we, we don't care about the swing high of that, we need this to be 24. It is, okay. And so if our entry, see the swing high of this candle was 909. We're going to give it two points room. So we're getting in at 11. Okay, 11 to 20. So that's actually only 13, not 14. Okay. All right. So before you ever get triggered into this trade, you know that you have 13 points of potential before you run into an obstacle. Do you want to take that trade? Well, let's think about this. Your goal is 20 points. So you might end up having to take a second trade to get your daily goal. Some people don't have a two-point daily goal. Some people have a one-point daily goal. Am I suggesting you should change your daily goal to one point instead of two? No, I'm not. Am I suggesting that some days you might be okay with 13 Dow points as opposed to 20? Yeah, that's a, that's a possibility. My whole point here is to teach you how to find the highest probability trade I know how to find. And for me, that's where there's no obstacle between my entry and my target. Okay? You guys can go back and watch this video later once I get it posted. Let me answer questions really quick because now I'm starting to run out of time to actually take a good break before the next show. Uh... And is it a close or just piercing the level for your entry? Mm. Tell me again what you mean, Kim. You're talking about entering here? Okay, what I did was I looked at the high of this candle, which is uh, 909. And then I just threw this a couple points higher. So what I would probably do is I would probably put on a buy stop, okay? If this is 09, put in a buy stop at, you know, 1410, 1411. I could lose one tick to slip by entering on a stop. That's possible. And so 
maybe I end up only taking 10 points out of this trade. But here's my point. There is such a high probability that price, if price gets above this high right here, if price can break that high, it's an incredibly high probability that price will at least go to this high. And look what it did. It went to that high. Now, we would have to go to smaller time frames to see how this played out, okay? But price actually went to, and on this candle, remember the candle opened here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that probably when this candle opened, price continued higher. So the high here was 930. So if you're getting in back here at 11, if you're getting in at 911, price went to 930. So that's what 19, that's 19 points that this thing traveled. That's almost 20 points. That's almost two ES points. But the, but the takeaway is that you did it in a high probability environment. You had no obstacles overhead. It was, you got yourself this little window of opportunity that was just clear sailing. Now, can things happen? Can sellers still come in? Can, oh yes, yes, yes. A thousand times, yes. All of that can happen. But my elevator pitch has been reduced to just not 30 seconds, but three lines in up markets and in down markets. Okay. Now some might look at that and go, you know, you don't have any indicators that that can't work. That doesn't, you know, well, again, you know, what I do is not for everybody. This is not the four tick range setup that you learn every day in the live trading room. This is the after show. This is where I just share with you some of the stuff that I see in the markets. Okay, so that was a clear sailing opportunity on the upside. Clear sailing on the downside. Let's go back to the S&P. hourly chart Wow. All right. Oh, I'm just going to go. Did I answer your question, Ken, about is it, a, is it a close up or just piercing the level for your entry? Did I answer your question? You can just enter on a stop. Buy stop or sell stop, depending on if, the, if you're getting into a long trade or a short trade. And this thing doesn't seem to want to change back to the hourly chart. It will in a minute. It's just dragging its feet because I got so much stuff churning away. All right. It is the weekend, so please spend some quality time with your family. And, of course, I'll see you all in church on Sunday. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this. 
There is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given home. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts, and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.